Good evening and welcome to our Halloween special. I'm Brian F. Irving. I'm from Gethsemane Games and DH9 Radio and I'll be your host for this evening's Halloween special in which we will be playing Crypt World by Goblinoid Games. Crypt World being the spiritual successor to uh, Pace Setter's original first edition of Chill. Hence, you will notice that the members of the cast are all members of the Eternal Society of the Silver Way, the Societas Argenti Via Eternitata, or save. Save having appeared in the original Chill, but not in the... Um, uh, in Crypt World, but I do rather like it, so we are going to use it. The music you will not be hearing today, because uh, so shortly before coming to air, we discovered that nothing is loading into the music player, no matter what we do, because the Halloween gremlins have struck. Um, so the music you won't be hearing would have been by Tabletop Audio or by DH9 Radio's production unit. The adventure we'll be playing today is Highland Terror, originally written in the 1980s for the original version of first edition Chill by Pace Setter, uh, designed by Gary Spiegel, editing by Michael Williams, cartography and design originally by Stephen D. Sullivan. The maps you'll be seeing today are, some are by myself, Others are by, and I knew this about 10 minutes ago, and my memory has uh, failed me already. Uh, others are by uh, Save versus Cave. The original cover art of um, Highland Terror was by um, Michael O'Connell, while the interior art by Jim Rosloff, some of which you will see in the adventure today. The character icons are primarily by Jenny Savall, using the Deer in Spotlight's um, little package, although one of the characters I created in something else, and I think one Chris created in something else, the monsters. Well, we've sourced them from various things. Aiden Norzine made a few years ago, myself. Ah, right, <laughs> there you go. So, welcome to the Society Argenti Via Eternitata, the Eternal Society of the White Way, a small-ish, but nonetheless global society of people who have encountered the supernatural once before and have banded together in an attempt to fight the unknown, to save humanity from the dangers that the creatures from other dimensions can, uh, can create. Thus, the society assembles small teams in order to send them abroad into dangerous places to deal with the creatures of the unknown, the incursions from beyond. The team today will be... Patrick, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Patrick and I'm playing Jimmy, also known as Old Jimmy, to his friends. Chris. I'm Chris. I play Aiden Oz, um, who's a zoologist. Uh, Jenny Sable. Hello, I'm Jenny. I play Alexis Strange, and she's a lecturer in mechanical engineering and also a private detective, strangely enough. <laughs> um, and she has some other skills in the astral field, shall we say. Uh, she's also quite experienced, having been on quite a few different missions in the past. Indeed. Uh, Marie? Hello, I'm Marie, and I'm playing Colette McClafferty, who is a journalist and a writer who's had some spooky encounters while investigating. Indeed so. And finally, Ben. Hello, do. I am Ben. I am playing uh, Mr. Oswald Remington. I am a history, uh, well, archaeologist historian, lecturer at Oxford University. Impressive. Okay, so there's Ben with his delusions of adequacy. <laughs> once again. Definitely didn't give enough of okay. my information about my character. No, that's okay, don't worry about it too much. Some save envoys will know more about one another than others will. You may or may not have served together in the past. The way save works 
as teams are assembled on the basis of who they believe will be needed for a particular mission and who is closest by. Sometimes only one of those two criteria is met. <laughs> uh, so, you are all currently in Glasgow. Glasgow Central Station, to be precise, following the instructions that you were given earlier by SAVE Central Headquarters in Dublin. Instructions, I might add, which I can't friggin' find. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a Yay, second. Yes. Did we it's lose a them on the train? Fantastic <laughs> start, isn't it? So um Where's it gone? Uh, player handouts, here we are. Uh save mission brief. I'll pop that no, I'll just, yes, I'll pop it up in front of you and hope there are no spelling mistakes. I'll also read it out for those at home or, or indeed uh, our, our players who may either be short sighted or um Lazy. Can't, can't be asked to read it, yes. Yeah. Uh, you received the save mission brief in the post a day or two ago. It reads as follows. Dear Envoy, thank you for your service to the Eternal Society so far. We are writing to you with a new assignment of some urgency. Fellow Society member and researcher Professor, Ang uh, that's a good start. Professor Angus Goff of Glasgow University has recently contacted SAVE's central office in Dublin, claiming to have uncovered some evidence that the fabled Loch Ness Monster is both real and a terrible threat from the unknown. He concludes that he requires the assistance of a field team in order to assist in neutralising the threat. Further, he wishes to hand over the evidence and research notes in person, not wishing to entrust them to the post. Professor Goff works with two additional research envoys, Drs. MacDonald and Charg. Together they constitute our Glasgow field office. <coughs> we have chosen you to be a member of our field team to meet with Professor Goff and his team two days from now. Your team should meet up beneath the clock at Glasgow Central Station at 1.30pm. Identify yourselves by wearing your indolo where your fellow agents may see it. Once your team has assembled, proceed to Professor Goff's apartment, the address of which has been sent to you in a separate letter. Each of you is part of the address. When your team assemble, you will know all dispatch agents have arrived when you have between you the complete address. Thank you and good luck. Save Central Archive. Nice. So you're currently at Glasgow Central Station, assembling beneath the uh, the clock, <coughs> and sure enough, you identify each of you by your indolo. So I'm just going to go around and find out who is wearing their indolo as what. Um, for those at home who don't know, an indolo. It's a little symbol either side of the word save on our landing page there. It looks like a stick figure looking into the dome of the sky. It's a very rare occult um, symbol, originally from South America, I believe. So, uh, beginning left to right with the characters as they appear on the save agent screen there. Alexa, how are you displaying your indolo and what is it made of? <laughs> I was just waiting for that. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> it's Alexis. So it, is. it is. Good work, Good work Jenny. Yep. <laughs> yep. How, how are you wearing, uh, displaying your indolo and what is it made from? Alexis has a very pretty... <laughs> So, uh, solid silver necklace with the symbol on it and she is obviously wearing it outside of her clothes at the moment and Chris how does um, Alden Oz wearing his um, Aiden is wearing it um, as a silver earplug on his right lobe okay. and Patrick how is Jimmy displaying his in the law as a shoelace clasp on his, if I can have, can I have two? Yes, yes, you can. Yep, um, on, on each of his shoes, made of iron. Made of iron, excellent. Okay, 
Sir Oswald Remington, how are you displaying your indolo, and what is it made from? I was trying to find it. Um, those things you put on, like, blazers, the cuffs that go on, like, the wrist. Cufflings. cufflings. Yes, cufflings. I've got cufflings, and they're made out of silver. Silver cufflings. Excellent. Silver cufflings. And finally, our 80s girl, Colette McClafferty. How are you displaying I'm your... Wearing, um, a, I'm wearing in the, over the high neck of my very tasteful polo neck, jersey polo neck, I'm wearing a very thin gold chain with a little gold indole on it. Okay, excellent. So each of you has identified the other agents by their indole, and also you've checked, you now have a full address. It would seem that the uh, professor has a fairly prestigious address, um, Certainly at the higher end one might expect for a professor, but not so high that it is suspicious. In okay. um, <coughs> the west end of Glas Glasgow, a fairly sizable um, apartment as well, and a fairly sizable apartment building. For those of you who are familiar with Glasgow, certainly Miss Strange is familiar with Glasgow, having uh, had at least one previous mission here. Mm. The haunted house that was under uh, construction. You might remember that from, I think, five or six years ago we played that game. <laughs> anyway, Looks so... Good fun. <laughs> it was indeed. So, uh, anybody need to do anything before heading over to the professor's apartment? Uh... And no, we're not having a full shopping trip. This is a <laughs> one-off. We don't have the time. <laughs> have I? I can't remember. Have I worked <laughs> with any of these? before um none of the missions we've actually played through were with any of the characters that you're serving with today no the right. only the only player that was in um those games with you was marie and she used a different character to yeah. the uh, one she's using today yeah okay well i'll i'll introduce myself um with alexis strange and i will shake everybody's hand okay. anybody else um, I'll, no, go, on you go, you do. Um, good to meet you, uh, Alexis. Um, my name is Aiden Oz. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you too. And uh, are you? Have you been with Save for a, a while? Um, a couple of years. I'm gonna say mm -hmm. <laughs> two years. Okay. <laughs> I um, recently um, helped with an endangered creature in Edinburgh um, in my last mission. Mm -hmm. So this is I mean, like here again, or like again, travel, I guess, to you. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Sounds very interesting. Right. Well, uh, I guess we all know where we're heading. Are we just, is it within walking distance or do we have cars or anything like that? Uh, it's out at the West End, so I wouldn't say it's within walking distance. No, no. It's but not the really. underground. No, um, yeah, I'll, I'll suggest, I'll say, well, I'm from Glasgow. Uh, the best bet's a clockwork orange, the underground. Mm -hmm. okay. That'll get us out to the West End and then we can see for there. I mean, I've, the, the address looks like it's not that far mm -hmm. to one of the underground yeah. stations so we'll get the underground out that far and then we can walk the rest of the way unless some of you can't walk in which case we can get a taxi well i know i'm Whatever's fine Whatever's faster honestly would i have one of my vans with me you might well have one of your vans with you yeah so we've got different ways of transport it's whatever people want mm -hmm. um a large city like this moving around it is quite often best um using public transport um, mm -hmm. But it's always handy to have your your vehicles um, as as well somewhere handy. So we mm -hmm. assume you've got them parked up and you're going to head out mm -hmm. to the, mm -hmm. <coughs> the west end via the Clockwork Orange, which is a nickname yeah. given to the um, the underground rail service there. Nice. So, when you arrive at, prof at the professor's apartment, um, you find that it's on. Um, the top floor of a small but large and very well maintained tenement building so it's 
it's not the kind of tenements you would expect to see um, poorer families crammed together in. It's one of the larger ones with a kind of upper working, lower middle class. Um, and he has uh, an apartment which occupies about 50% of the, the top floor. However, you also discover one other thing. And that is, that he doesn't appear to be answering his door. Oh dear. <laughs> Huh. Could Oswald, uh, I'm uh, going. I'm going to say, well, as as a journalist, and I like to think of myself as an investigative journalist, I've got an idea, and I'm going to check under his doormat to see if there's a spare key. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a general look check, please. If you pass it, there is. Right. Uh, so I'm rolling a D100, yeah. D100, and you try to score less than your look attribute. So you've scored nope. 96, so that's, that's not <laughs> going to be... Oh, wow. So you, open, you, you, pull back the, um, you pull back the welcome mat, the external welcome mat, looking for a, a key, a spare key. Um, unfortunately, there doesn't appear um, to be one there. You feel vaguely disappointed. Ben, you're trying to say something. Go ahead. Can I try the door? Uh, yes, you can try the door. Worryingly enough, as you try the door, it swings open. Oswald uh, takes a puff of his pipe. Hmm. Indubitably. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, I'm, oh, gonna oh. I'm gonna side eye him massively. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna take you over to the professor's apartment. Now, before we do anything, tell me if you can see the map right now, because you shouldn't be no. able to yet. Good. No, no. <laughs> We have had a few technical issues during the course of the day while I was setting this up. And at one point, all of the um, the thingy lighting broke. So let's hope that, that doesn't okay, continue. May I ask the weather? You can ask the weather. Because of the time of year it is, it's uh, late July. Um, so you're still looking at uh, summer. So it's it's kind of it's quite pleasant actually to be in town. Live in the UK. It's yeah. raining. It's it's in Glasgow. It's, it's always raining. fucking storming. I, I'll off. tell you what. The first time I went to Glasgow to see Marie when we uh, when we got together, um, <laughs> I packed as everybody suggested uh, for the coldest conceivable time. It was record uh, temperatures of and I almost <laughs> melted <laughs> because nothing I'd brought with me was suitable for the high temperature. Oh dear. Um, oh, Sod's see why. That's uh, the pre I'm going, going to when we've discovered the doors open. Yep. Who exactly opened the door? It, Oswald did. Oswald, yes, he did. Right. Uh, so I'm going to look at him and I'm going to think, right, hmm. I'm going to say to him, you don't have a criminal record, do you, Oswald? Absolutely. What would you be suggesting, madam? Of course I don't. I'm just suggesting that we're about to go into an unlocked house uh, and you touch the door. <laughs> we shouldn't madam, touch, uh, we may shouldn't... I said, does anybody here know? <laughs> Takes a puff. First aid, there seems to be a deceased man over there. Oh, oh Christ! Oh Christ! First day, it's not going to help somebody with disease. Don't touch nothing else. Don't touch anything. Right? Alexis is going to ready her pistol. <laughs> you I'm have a pistol, it. right? Good well, gracious, madam! I should have one because it's one of my skills. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take out a report, one of the little dictaphones, the reporter's dictaphones. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to set it going. So mm -hmm. that we've got a record of what we're doing. I'm going to say we've just come to the house of, Profe of Professor. What's his name? Professor? Goff. 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 Yeah. We're at Professor Goff's house in the West End. Um, we've come up to see him as per his request. There appears The door appears to be open and there appears to be a body in the, in the house. Um, so far, only. One of us has touched anything, and it was o Oswald that touched the front door handle, which we would have to do at the end of the house. Hang on, mm -hmm. everybody, get back. It looks like there's something pouring out of the cooker. It's oh. smoke. It could be gas. gas. It's smoke. Oh. It's smoke. smoke. You can also hear a faint... 
I do apologise right. I'm having to do the sound effects myself, but they also feel to draw. Um, um, oh, he's okay, not right. Somebody, does anybody want to go in there and get him? Deep breath, running in, going to okay, drop stop, it stop, 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 stop. the smoke. Okay, I so as you get go. there, could you give me a mm -hmm. fear check, please? So a fear check is a yep. D100 trying to score less than your um, uh, willpower. And it is a specific check, so I'll need to know exactly how much you passed by. Okay, so my willpower is 58. So if your willpower is 58, so you uh, passed by 30. 30 on the one. So you are startled when something grabs your ankle as you come dashing into the room. Startled, but not frightened. You look down and you see a young man, probably teens, late teens, early, very early 20s at best, lying on the ground, bloody wound on the back of his head, uh, very, very glazed, as kind of crawling towards you, he's grabbed you with one hand round your ankle and then lost consciousness. Oh, dear. I'm going to go and knock, try and raise the neighbours. I'm going to start hammering on the door. Somebody get this guy first aid. I am going to follow I'm going to continue, I'm gonna continue running towards the, the the guy who has been gassed or in, in the smoke. Okay, so you go running over into the um, into the kitchen as uh, um, as uh, McClafferty starts hammering on the opposite door because there are only two apartments on the top floor here. <coughs> Unfortunately, nobody's answering the uh, other apartment either. Um, mm -hmm. However, given the time of day it is, you suspect they're probably at work, whereas you knew the professor was supposed to be at home. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, I'm, you've sorry, Marie, go ahead first. I'm going to lean over the banister and yell down the close at the top of my not insubstantial <coughs> lungs. Mm -hmm. Fire, fire, somebody call the fire brigade. Uh, okay. You yell for them to, to um, call the fire brigade. I'm going to assume that somebody hears you fairly, fairly rapidly. So mm. they start ringing the fire brigade. You do hear a few people sort of gathering in the uh, the stairwell of the close. What's going on? What's happening? What's Professor a, where's a Goff, fire? Professor Goff's apartment uh, is flat, so on fire. He, uh, he's collapsed. I need the fire brigade, and you might want to call the police and all. Somebody get the police. Somebody get a fire brigade. The utter chaos breaks out down there. Also, it occurs to you that you're going to have to do whatever you want to do here fairly quickly now that you've summoned the authorities. I want to check something. Yeah, <clears throat> go ahead. Can I check for, like, scrape marks, blood, and just, like, the regular sort of tracking stuff? You can indeed. Give me... You can either give me a What's general that? perception test or a general tracking ch te blah, 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 test. Either one of those will do nicely. And then I'm oh. going back over to uh, Jimmy after I've got the answer to that. That's a pass on 87. That's a pass. Okay, so you notice that there are scrape marks on the door which suggest the door was forced by a large, sharp object. Okay. <coughs> Jimmy. Over. Brian, yep. before yep. you go over mm -hmm. to Jimmy, can I just point out my character sheet isn't actually in the game? Uh, it, it is because like put it together. So let me mm -hmm. just. So what probab what it probably isn't is um, available not, to you. So if I edit it, uh, yeah, it is in the game. It just ha you don't have permissions to access it. I think I'll fix that. So um, clip Marie and clip Marie. Changes. There you go, it should have appeared now. Yep, it's appeared now. Okay. So, Jimmy, you're in the kitchen. Um, I'm dragging him out of that smoke and out to, towards fresh air. Okay. If so while I'm. Sorry, go on. If while I'm doing so, I can also get a bit of a look at him and just quickly scan around the walls to see if there are photographs or portraits or anything that look like him. To, okay. to make sure that he actually belongs here. <coughs> uh, and, and likewise with the guy who, who grabbed me at the door. Mm. Okay. The guy who grab, grabbed you at the door is in his late teens. There's no way he's the, a professor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, the other two men that are supposed to be here are um, 
doctors. So he's mm-hmm. not old enough for that either. Also, he's dressed in uh, work clothes. Those of you who are close to him, there is a faint smell of fish coming from him. Uh, Jimmy, also, in the kitchen, the smell of burning is overpowering in the smoke-filled kitchen. Lying dead with his head and upper torso in the oven is a man, now unidentifiable to look at. So as you pull the body out, could you give me a fear test? Because this is an extremely gruesome sight to see. He's a little so bit crispy. A specific willpower test on a column three. So you just tell me if you pass or fail and how much okay. you pass by. Well, uh, that's, uh, my willpower is 58. Uh, so that's f- 24. So 24 on a column three fear test. You are mildly frightened. Um, you lose 1d5. Uh, so if I roll a d10 and we will half that two you lose two points of willpower as you pull the body out you see that the, the head a lot of the flesh just stays stuck to the oven as you pull oh. the body out oh no <laughs> yeah, it's all you can do to hold your breakfast in as you pull him oh. away to <clears throat> safety in inverted commas and this yeah. bloody smear follows across the path uh, across the the path of the um... was was professor goff supposed to be a, um, a save member as well Yes, uh, Professor Goff and his doctors were research agents, not field agents. Check him for an indolor. Okay, so you check the man for an ill in oh, there. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've just done something silly. There we go. You check the man uh, for an indolor, and you find one. Interestingly enough, it's embroidered onto his wallet. Mm. Okay. Oh, open it up, make sure it's actually his wallet. Okay, so according to the wallet, the man you've just pulled out of the oven is... Um, where will I find it? Where's the kitchen? Kitchen, there you go. Dr. Larry MacDonald. Oh, okay. Mm. Right, so this is this is not the professor... Oh, well, that's not the professor's wallet at the very least. Yeah. There is a picture of him in the, the in the mm-hmm. wallet on his driving license. I think driving license has pictures by 1984. Might be wrong. I if if so. not, then the picture is on something else. But unfortunately, it is impossible to tell. Yeah. Because there's nothing left of this man's face. It's literally being cooked off. Yeah. Uh, uh, be on so, his university ID. Uh, yeah, be on his university ID. So I'm going to ask Ben, what are you doing at the moment? <coughs> Uh, I was just quickly looking up the ID thing. Other countries had it, so I'm assuming the UK had no, it. No, I, I, I think our driving license didn't start to have a, a picture ID till the 90s, but it could be like mm-hmm. So I was going to check if there were other members in the house. Obviously, my character would know there are meant to be other members in the house. So, yes. so looking up the, the corridor that you're looking up, you've got three doors. You're standing outside one of them. Um, so Can I make an observation? Or a, a perception, yes. I should say. Yes, you can. Uh, are, do any of the doors look disturbed in any way? Like they've been brute force or they're covered in blood or anything like that? Give me a general perception check. So I just need to know whether you pass or fail. There's a few things um, I want to do as well when I get the chance. Okay, I'll, I pass. I'll come on to you as soon as we've dealt with the first three <clears> minutes. <throat> You've yeah. passed, okay. It does look like some of the other doors have been disturbed, yes. Hmm. Which ones? All of them. All of them. Fantastic. That narrows it down. So I'll start with this one. Okay. (laughs) So you're going to start with that one. Once we've dealt with that room, I'm going to go over to uh, Miss Strange. Um, So let's deal with (laughs) opening that door first. So I go over to the dynamic lighting and we just delete the door. Um, There we go. And you should be able to see into what appears to be a bedroom. It's a empty bedroom. moderately sized bedroom. It is empty. Um, let me just see. So it is um, somewhat comfortable. Uh, scattered about it are a number of personal items of the, of the homeowners or somebody who lives here, certainly. Lying on the bed is a half-packed suitcase containing clothing, toiletries, and what appears to be a brown envelope. Mm. See, well, we'll have to deal with that later. One question before you go over to Jenny. Yep. Is there anyone under the bed? <laughs> you take a cautious look under the bed. You sink to the ground and 
on all fours, peer under the bed, worried that you might find something there. Give me a fear test, please. That's a general willpower. I'm <laughs> safe. Uh, okay. That's a pass. Well, as it happens, there's nothing under the bed except a pair of shoes anyway. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> so, going over to uh, Alexis, you're by the um, the entrance door. Um, mm -hmm. I would have said to Alexis that, the, that there's something, the scratch, I would have showed her the, the scratch marks on the door. Yes. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So you showed her the scratch marks on the door. Alexis, you're down close to the door and where the, the three comfortable seats are close to this table on which, or built into which, I should say, is a television set. It's quite an old-style sort of television cabinet where the mm -hmm. television was inside and you could close the cabinet and hide it away, which was a bit more of a thing in the 80s than it is now. Also, if anybody's wondering, this over here is a bar. Complete with optics. Oh there. yes, of course. Does it have glass <laughs> bricks? Uh, it does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? Glass glass bricks that were very big in the eighties. Yep. Yep. Very. Oh, my yeah. parents had a bar <clears throat> like that. I'm just yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, how close is that other body that grabbed Ginny's leg? Uh, is is right over here. He's right by the. Uh, in fact, I tell you what. I'll just copy paste this body in. Okay. Um, so we have he's by the front door, won't he? He's by the front. Yeah. He grabbed his leg when he came through. So um, yeah. the the person we've put there is actually far too um, old for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. person that is actually lying there. But uh, there they are. Young, he's right yeah. by the door. Yeah. Okay, I am going to shout. Uh, has anybody got any first aid? Um, and I'm gonna. I'll have a look at this guy. Um, I'm gonna see if he has an indolo on him. <laughs> And I also, if I if I can, want to use sense unknown. Okay, well. give me that. a sense unknown <laughs> check, please. Anybody that would like to can give me a sense unknown check. Well, I'm first aid on the game. Ah, yeah. no chance. <laughs> okay, if anybody passes, let me so know. So close. <coughs> okay, only one of you rolled from your character sheet there. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just okay, don't I, I clicked the thing. What do you mean? <laughs> mm. I might not have the inline uh, thing uh, oh. macro built into all of the character sheets because I wasn't a bit of a rush oh, towards it's... the end. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the nobody's sensed unknown yet, but nobody's got a strong sense that there definitely isn't any unknown here either. Mm. Well, Sorry, Jenny, re refresh me memory. What were your other yeah. questions? Uh, I was going to take a closer look at this young boy's body, see if okay. he has an indolo on That's him right. or anything else of interest. He's not wearing an uh, indolo, but he is clutching a note, like a handwritten note. Um, okay. The back of his head's been hit quite hard. Um, right. The work clothes is in a kind of um, jeans, uh, t-shirt, dungarees, and there is a strong smell. Uh, sorry, a, a faint smell of the fish off him. He fish. also has like a beanie hat. Okay, I'm going to take the note and put him into the recovery position. <coughs> okay. Um, I, 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 does anybody have first aid? Because my character doesn't. If no one first does, first aid kits, and I've got some form of biology. Okay, well, I've, I've shouted for it, so you're right, right there. Um, and I'll take a look at the note. Okay. So you're taking a look at the note. The note is... Let me just pop that one up for you. Um, so play a handout. Ah, I don't see that. Oh, right, yes, okay. So the note he's got on wasn't interesting enough for me to actually do his handout. <laughs> um what what it is it's a name of a ship uh it's an Ooh. and a time a, or a face. boat rather yeah it's a name of a, a boat and a time uh, <coughs> the time right. being early evening today okay uh and the boat the the boat has a name yes <laughs> hey brian yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you know how I have like psychic abilities? Uh-huh. 
you know what my psychic ability can I use it? Discipline of the art, I think you mean. Could I have used it last night? Is yours clairvoyant prescient dream? Yes. Yes. Give Mm -hmm. give me a roll for that, see if it went off. A general test will be fine. Thanks. Oh god no. (laughs) It did not. It did not go off. Okay. So (laughs) A uh, clairvoyant prescient dream will allow you to not spend that six willpower when it didn't work. If it was last night, I would have regained it by then, anyways, wouldn't I? Uh, yes, you'll have. Well, uh, no, once a week you're allowed to. No, one once a week if it's successful. So you can actually try again next time you sleep. Okay. Yep. Um, Excuse me. Sorry. That's okay. So, uh, Marie, I'm coming back to you. What would you like to do next? Okay, so I've shouted for the police in the uh, the police in the ambulance, the fire yes. brigade. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to run into past everything to see if the professor's in his study or anything. You know, I'm just going to mm-hmm. run past where um, Patrick's character is, Jimmy, yeah. and just go looking for. The professor, basically. Okay, so you want to be over here by uh, Ben's character. Yeah. That's where you want to be. So... I get the south door. Do you want to get the north door? Yeah, do this I'll together. do that. Okay, so you want me to open both of those... Um, just put you there. Mm-hmm. Both of those doors, and then I will... I'll move to the side. You can sh- you can share a square with us. So I'm also going to be seeing it, uh, narrating things into this. <laughs> tape recorder mm-hmm. that yeah. we found that somebody appears to be a fisherman from his dress and from the from the smell on his clothing he's a note with a, with a name on it i'm going to say about we seem to have found one man seems to be cooked one man <clears throat> dead in the oven he seems to have been cooked we've turned off the oven uh now myself and this guy's wet himself this mm-hmm. professor is are going to try and uh, some more doors i'm going to actually pull my Pull my sleeve over my hand okay. to, do the, to mm. turn the doorknob. So you pull your sleeve over your hand and turn Please the doorknob without chewing leaving chewing bubble gum at the <laughs> <laughs> um, this, No, this is dead serious. I'm oh. gonna, no, <laughs> this, this, you know. Actually, we're all pretty lucky because it's the 80s and none of us stood at a crime scene smoking. <laughs> I'm just going to move I'm you to where you're actually standing. So you've opened the door into what turns mm-hmm. out to be a bathroom. Fairly sizable bathroom for a tenement in um, in Glasgow. There is a God, you could put my whole flat in there. <laughs> there is a, a lavatory over here, a mm-hmm. um, shower there, and mm-hmm. a bath full of water and dead person over here. You also oh. see a large amount of water has spilled out of the um, mm-hmm. out of the bath. The words that come to mind when you see what you see. Is this oh. kind of man underneath the water, his face down, uh, his hands kind of ones draped over the, the bathroom, there's water all over the floor. The words that come to your mind are, there appears to have been a struggle. Mm-hmm. Give me a fear check, please. That is a general, oh, okay. t- sorry, a specific test against your willpower. Right, I'm going to try and see if the macro on the thing works. Um, I'm being asked to change my pink colour, so I'm going to change it to... I'm looking for something that nobody else is using. Um, Yellow. No, the pink doesn't seem to be working. It's just that black on black, so... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Marie, what, what were you doing? Uh, ah, oh, have you just rolled five for your fear test? Yeah, I just have. And my world per 66, so I've passed by 61. You've passed by 61. This is a... I'm uh, a pure dead hardened crime scene reporter, by the way. So you Not have a <laughs> courageous reaction to the sight of mm-hmm. the dead man. You kind of, you just, yeah, you're reacting like a crime scene reporter. You're just like, oh, story. No, no, there appears to have been a struggle. There appears to be a man in the bath dead. I'm going to check him for signs of life. And I'm going to sort of ginger, try and step <laughs> through this puddle so I don't get my leg warmers wet. <laughs> and uh, check for a pulse. And okay. you begin pink nails. So you take yeah. one of his hands in, in yours and check for a pulse. Give me either mm-hmm. a first aid or a medical check or a specific perception check, please. <coughs> Sorry. 
searching. My perception is 68 and I've rolled 38, so I've passed by 30. Uh, you've passed mm -hmm. by 30, okay. The man is dead. <laughs> there, is, <laughs> there is no pulse. Um, he's quite clearly drowned. From the temperature, um, you would estimate that he's been dead. Well, it's difficult to tell because he was drowned in water and you've no idea what the temperature of the water was when he was drowned in it. So mm -hmm. it, it was killed today, but beyond you that, you could further ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could estimate. Yeah. Yeah. If his like skin was red and like whatever, then the water was very hot. No, if his skin is bloated and began to take on water, then he's been dead a few hours. Yeah, it's not bloated yet, and it's not reddened, so the water wasn't that hot a temperature. Chris, what is Aiden doing? How stable does this teenager look? <clears throat> he would be a lot more stable if somebody would give him some medical attention, but he doesn't look like he's likely to die. I'd give him some emergency first aid then. Okay. Do you have the first aid skill? If not, give me a uh, general perception. Well, actually, just give me a D100 test and I'll check your character sheet. So I know which attributes it's going to be based on. So it'll be... <laughs> All right, okay, that's quite good. Plus that divided... Okay. Uh, what did you roll? 41. 41, yes. Okay, so you've definitely managed to stabilise him. You stop the bleeding. Um, you can hear him. Oh, he's kind of still unconscious. But you, you think he'll come okay. around fairly soon. Your primary worry is with a blow like that to the back of the head, concussion is an almost certainty. So he's going to need proper medical attention in a hospital. Um, you would imagine probably a severe concussion as well. Um, can I carry him downstairs to the front, or would it be best to keep him here? You think it would be best to keep him here till the, the <coughs> ambulance arrives? Until we get a stretch board up there. That's, that's, that's right, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's going to take you a little while to do, so I'm going to go to Jimmy. Jimmy, what are you doing? Patrick, I think you're still muted. Patrick? Quite right, I was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Is the is the oven still on? Is it is it um, is it a gas oven? Is it causing any any threat? It's not causing any threat uh, because the pi the pilot's lit. The um, it is a gas oven as it happens, uh, mm. but it is baking away quite nicely there. Um, oh. Now that there's not a body in there to keep um, to keep burning, which was the, yeah. the problem. The body was actually burning because it had been in far too long yeah um, i can sort of you can start to dissipate the the smoke by opening this window yeah you also notice of course there's a door there as well if you... the the other thing i want to check I'll, I'll have a quick look at that door is there is there anything of note about it that door there it appears to be the door to a pantry uh i'll open it it's the door to a pantry Okay. <laughs> right. The other My thing, I, God, the other thing I want to do, me. I want to check and see if there are any business cards on this guy who smells faintly of fish. Okay. Uh, you check in for business cards whilst your companion is uh, um, is uh, making him safe. Um, it doesn't seem to be carrying any business cards. No. Okay. You can find a wallet on him, but there's only about five pounds mm -hmm. in it. You can mm -hmm. find some identity in it. Um, mm -hmm. You don't immediately know this because you're not the one that read the note, but when you read his name out, um, Miss Strange mm -hmm. mentions that it's the same surname as the person mentioned in the note. So you suspect yeah. the note, which has got a, a human's name, a date, and a, a time, and the name of a boat... You suspect that the human name is probably the captain, and this would appear to be his son. Right. And, okay. and is this is this a door over here? It is a door over there. Yes. Yeah. Let's have that one open as well. Okay. Uh, dynamic lighting. So as you open the door, a um, humanoid shape topples forwards towards you. Give Give me another uh, fear check, please. Oh no. <laughs> So that's yeah. a uh, sp specific willpower test. 
when I hold, hear all the screaming about yet another body, I'm going to see it the tape recorder suggesting a headline. Several bodies found in murder flat. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so that's uh, 36 versus my current willpower of 56. 56, so, so you've passed, passed by, by 20. 20, which yeah. means you are um, courageous. You suffer no adverse results. So as this humanoid form topples out, you grab it and you realise it's just a coat on a coat stand. That's, <laughs> of course. It's okay. just like, fallen out of the... <laughs> the thing, so you kind of grab it and just lower it to the ground. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so Ben, back to you. And you were taking a look through that southern the door. door. Mm-hmm. So let me just delete this door here. Ben, uh, mm-hmm. my you, sorry, Colette is going to say to you, put a handkerchief over your hand before you turn that handle. Don't obliterate any fingerprints. So... Of course, ma'am. <laughs> so, Ben, <laughs> what Sir Oswald has discovered is the following. This is a library come study. Books, maps and papers are scattered all about the room. A large calendar and a map of the British Isles are um, on the wall behind the desk. Hanging from the ceiling is the body of a man in his late 50s. Wow. Give me a fear test, please. I'll come in and I'll see the entire library and I'll go... This is just jump scares. Well, I never. What? I'm, I'm really struggling to be posh here. <laughs> just be yourself, then. Uh, for fuck's sake. I mean, it's a D100. I rolled a 12. Okay. I just rolled the wrong thing. So you have rolled a 12, 12. for your... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, and if that's willpower, then that would be over 60. So yeah, I passed so... by 48. You are fine, so you're not overly frightened by it, but what you see is a man in his early 60s, hung by the neck, swinging from the chandelier, which is starting to tear away a little bit from the rosette in the middle of the the ceiling. Um, He's swinging backwards and forwards, his tongue's blue and lolling out of his mouth, his head to his side, his eyes are wide and bulging, His, um, his hands are kind of just drooping, by the side of his body, as you would expect, one of his shoes has fallen off. Um, again, it doesn't look like he he hung himself. Let's put it that way. Mm. It looks like somebody very much put him there in that position. I'll turn do- to Marie and go. I do say, Mom, there seems to be a man hanging out in the library. <laughs> oh God! As you say <laughs> that, as you turn, note to, s- note go to self, definitely use the headline. <laughs> Bodies found in mother flat. <laughs> As you turn to tell her, um, you also find oh, a um, in the corner of the room is a, uh, a small corner unit upon which is a silver dagger with a hilt mm. shaped in the form of a ram-headed snake. Well, this seems important. I will loot it. <laughs> right, you are. So you grab the uh, the dagger and uh, you're standing holding it at the moment. Um, I you wouldn't know... you keep that in your horn, mine, son, because some of the Glasgow police will turn up and you'll just get left it. Mm-hmm. You're an archaeologist. Also, yes, in... and this is, this is a found I found in the uh, in a park mm-hmm. as All... an archaeologist. Also, in the room, you find on the desk is a box, uh, a wooden box of incredible age, by the look of it. Okay, I just want to point out, so we found like all the residents of this house now, haven't we? Yes, as far as you know. And they're all dead except for one. He'll be yeah. fine though. This box, however, whereabouts is it? Because I'll move my character there. It's on the desk. On the desk, I see. Oh, I am on the desk. I will not climb on the desk. Right. All right, I'll move up to the box and I will, okay, putting on my latex gloves, I'll assume I'll have some as a yeah, part yeah, of the, yeah, my archaeologist yeah. kit. Yeah. I'll start to inspect this uh, piece, because okay. th- this is immediately, this is my area. I'm very, uh, yeah, I'm fascinated by this. Yeah, absolutely. Give me a general archaeology test, please. Hmm. Uh, actually, I don't actually, I don't actually have archaeology. History will be fine. <laughs> I have anthropology, I forgot what that's about. Anthropology is the study of uh, humanity and its tribes. Is it? Oh, 
You can give me a test for that, actually. With the information you'll find will be something different, but you can give me a test for that. Well, I pass. Okay. Something about the box is confusing you. Mm -hmm. Some of the um, iconography on the box is Celtic in nature. However, the design of the box looks more Middle Eastern. Not British Isles. Also, as you're moving it to have a a look at it, you realise two things about it. Firstly, that it is locked. And secondly, that there is a letter underneath it. Okay. Before I inspect the letter, can I make the, that uh, general archaeology roll? Just to see. Uh, it's not my speci- specialty, but I might still know it. If you don't have archaeology, then no. Okay. I'll uh, take a look at the letter then. Okay. Which Haven't you found one letter already that you didn't look at at the time? Yes, but this is, you know, intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, uh, the one you have deigned to look at, is uh, I've it just popped it up. This is what it says. Professor Goff, I have sent you a wooden box containing something that I think is of great importance to your studies. Within you will find a document written in what we believe to be Sanskrit. The document, however, was placed between two she- sheets of amber, exactly as it was found. Where it was found is the puzzle, for it was found on a monolith here on the Isle of Iona. I trust this will assist in your studies, Brother Pace. Can I use ancient languages for Sanskrit? Sanskrit, Sanskrit, yes, Sanskrit. you can. So you're going to have to get into the box in order to do that. So Damn. before we do that... I, I roll too fast. Before we do that, I'm going to go back to the other players. Remember them? <laughs> so what's uh, the three people gathered around the body what are you doing uh, well I'll be making sure that they both know about what's on this note um, but I will also be taking out a pair of black leather gloves and I will start going about a general investigation of this room starting with the TV cabinet and working my way uh, in a uh, clockwise direction Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll assist in a general investigation. Okay, okay. could I get... Uh, wait a minute, I might not need them for this. Um, so you are in the living room. Just like you know what I'm doing as well. Um, I'm going to be looking at this scratch mark on the door and trying to figure out the size of, the, of whatever may have made it. Okay, so can you give me an investigation roll, please? Um, the rest of you are not going to need to. You uh, do a sweep um, mm-hmm. of the the living room, uh, and you don't find anything untoward. You don't find any further clues except the unconscious man and the note he was holding that you've now got. Okay. Um, you notice that um, uh, Aiden is taking a closer look at this door. Aiden, mm-hmm. did you uh, make the roll? And could you tell me? No, I was wondering if it was track. I was able to know who's tracking. Mm, go on, I'll let you, but I'll give you a little bit of a penalty. Well, I may as well just roll perception then. Right, yeah. <laughs> so it's only a little bit lower. Uh, that's a pass by 52. 52, okay. No, no 50, sorry. So, whatever's made this uh, thing, it has been used like a, um, uh, what do you call it, a crowbar. But it clearly Mm. isn't one. It wasn't designed to be one. It is instead a large hook. And when I say large, I'm talking it is larger than a crowbar would would have been. Um, Okay. Whatever they've used, it was not designed for popping doors over like this. In fact, you've found what looks like a piece of a cat's claw. You know when a cat's claw sheds the outer? Only this is big. I mean, this is bigger than your hand. So you think something with large claws, each claw being about the size of your hand, has used those claws to jimmy this door open. Um, Are you going to tell us about that? I'm going to actually ask for uh, Sir, Be- uh, Sir, Sir Oswald's assistance here, because it seems okay. almost prehistoric if it's this big. It does, actually, yeah. Something like a thylacule or something, but I need to ask him. 
Okay. Anthropologist would be ideal for this. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Well, if you don't tell us about that, I mean, I'll tell you. You'll have seen me, Nate, pick it up, I guess. Uh, well, it depends on if you tell us specifically what it is or not. Because I'll, I'll tell you then. I'll say, I'll say I found a nail scraping the size of like big, like big, yeah, like a large cat. Yeah. Right. Uh, when he says that, is there any kind of creature or something that Alexis might think that that could potentially be if it isn't just like a physical thing that has a claw on it? Whatever it is, you've never seen an animal with a claw that size. Mm -hmm. mm. Even something otherworldly. No, um, <laughs> you, ha you personally haven't seen anything from the unknown? That had claws like that, but you would not be at all surprised. Mm -hmm. So, can the people around the body give me a second um, sense unknown test, please? All right. As it now rises up. A, no, no, you're now making the uh, the Come sense on, unknown man. test on this claw. <laughs> it always gets so close. Not quite. <laughs> okay. What's the uh, target number? Uh, whatever your sense unknown skill is, it won't be anywhere near 68. It'll be in the teens. <laughs> yeah, mine's only, mine's only 12. <laughs> uh, the sense unknown is a percentage, so I, I have to get lower than the percentage that I've got to pass. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is uh, it, can mm -hmm. I just say before we're going to, is this something that I might be able to pick up with astral projection if I'm worried that there might be something here? Or would it not be? Not really, no. Right, okay. Um, okay, Ben, could you also give me a sense unknown test, please? Absolutely, sir. And Marie, could you give me one as well? I did not pass. No, you didn't. Too focused on the box. No, are you. Focus on his English accent. No. Okay, so, uh, Marie, what's Mercedes McLafferty doing at the moment? Well, um, I've got a... Um, Discipline of the Arts, Telepathic Empathy. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. can I try using that to see if I can get anything? Um, well, that's used on a person. Uh-huh. A live one, ideally. All ah, right. So, okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, I'm going to... So he's got a, a dagger in a box. Yes. I'm mm -hmm. going to say... Um, Right, I'm going to read for the contents of that note into my little recorder. Um, the note is just read out. Yeah. Aye, and I'm going to write it in my reporter's notebook okay. as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go walk into the hallway, walk past death, and go out into the clothes, basically. Right. Um, I'm going to see about the man found hanging in the library. I'm going to skip over what Oswald found in case I'm asked to disclose this to the police. Yeah. Mm. I'm, going to, I'm going to see. Mm? I'll, uh, I'll also mention there was a letter in the uh, first room that I'm I didn't not, touch. Uh, get the letter, hide it. I'll have stopped my tape recorder and see if get the letter, hide it. Right? And I'm going to see. Um, We've only moved. We've moved some things um, in, a, in an attempt to identify the people within the property and to be sure that they were who we were, who we were expecting. I'm now going to leave the flat and wait in the hallway for the police to come. Mm. Uh, Very cryptic. That's the know. letter from the first room, the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Iona Southwest Clips. Careful. Brother Pace, AG. Very cryptic. Okay, so Ben, you're still unable to open this box and you can now hear one of the other envoys calling you for assistance. Well, before I go, there's gonna this box would have came with the key if it's been locked, because obviously that some obviously the person who sent it knows the contents, so he's unlocked it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna search the desk and the surrounding area for a key. Okay, so um, give me a investigation. Please tell me you're keeping the handkerchief over your hands so you don't leave your. I've got latex gloves on. 
Oh. I've got gloves on because I'm handling uh, <laughs> delicate uh, ancient stuff. <laughs> I don't have an investigation. Give me perception instead. Of... All of yours. That is a pass uh, by math. Um, 36 over 72. Okay, so you notice several things, but none of them is the key you were hoping to find. What you do notice is that there is an open book on a table near a chair and a reading lamp. The book is a reference work entitled Possible Origins of the Celts and Cultural Similar Similarities in Rituals and Ceremonies to Northwest Hindu Pantheon by Sir Giles Lanthrop. Okay. So I'm just going to well, copy that in. That's of interest to you because that's the second reference you've seen in this room. To the Celts. To the Celts being connected to the Middle East in some way. Um, mm. The professor definitely thought so. I'm wanting to. Okay, no, never mind. Well, I'll I've just. Not, I'll. Sorry, Chris. I've not seen the letter yet, so I can't comment on it. Uh, technically, I've, my character hasn't. Yeah. So. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna move out this room anyway. I'll get the box. Well, I'll put the box. I did say there were several things you found. Okay, um, sorry. So jump in the gun. In the book, the name of the Hindu god named Asvan Mahadla, and okay. Asvam Edha, sorry, is marked in pencil on an open page. The page deals with ancient horse sacrifice rituals, which are intended to bring some aspect of the the god into the temple. The term horse sacrifice is underlined in red. You also notice on the wall is a calendar with August 1st marked in red and the, main, the name Lugnasand written beneath it. Does um, that mean anything to me? Give me an anthropology test, please. I know what it is. <laughs> That's a pass. Okay, so Lugnasand was an ancient Celtic festival. Mm -hmm. Specifically, a festival to the the god Lug of the Long Hand. Mm -hmm. The one where they go around the pole. Yeah. <laughs> it's thought to have been a harvest festival, and the festival was especially important to the Druids. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mercedes, uh, you're in the the close, and you notice that there's a lot of kerfuffle downstairs as like multiple voices are, are talking all at once. Glancing down, you see the police have arrived along with the fire brigade, and everybody's trying to tell them what's happening, and they're getting they're just trying to get through. I'm going to shout up. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to shout up here, and if I recognise one of them, <laughs> I'll call them by name. Uh, give me a look test, see if you recognise any of them. Just a general look test will su suffice, since of the field you work in. Oh, I think I passed. Yes, <laughs> so you do recognise one of the officers, yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, to the rest of you, right? Uh, Mercedes is calling the police up here to take a look at the crime scene, which seems a sensible thing to do. However, you're also aware that everything here is about to be impounded as evidence. Yep. yep. If there's anything so, you want to take with you, I'm going to talk. talk I'm be, going to be talking in a very loud voice so they all know that the police are coming. So they have to hide things. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll be hiding the note. I'll um, be hiding the nail shaving in my belt or something. Or I'll, I'll be hiding the knife, the box, and the book. <laughs> okay. So the the problem is um, those are quite bulky things in some instances, and. <laughs> Not many of you are skilled at concealing things from people who are looking what? for things. One what of you is. On? Top five. Um, would, uh, would, that, would that be me? Yes. Be. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I didn't know if like concealing came under that particular skill. But, yeah, under your but, theft skill, yes. Indeed, yes. I, I, was, I wasn't going to name it, but fair enough. Oh, sorry. What's uh, like, <laughs> the, the gear this way? I, I I hold my very large trench coat open and you know <laughs> f f full of full of pockets, well, fully dressed. Have, I did have an idea. Okay. Can I, okay. My idea was going to be was going to be that we had come, you had come, Oswald had come from Cambridge University with these Oxford. pieces. Hmm? Oxford. Oxford. I wouldn't Oxford. deal with the Cambridge kind. Oh, sorry. But he's come up to Oxford University with these pieces. For study with these professors, 
so they're ours in the first place. We've just brought them here. Okay. So you don't have a great deal of time. So you're going to have to decide what you are going to try and sleight of hand out of here and what you're going to try and bluff past the police. Um, I think I'll, gi- I'll give uh, him the knife and the notes. Uh, the knife and the book. The box will be too bulky yeah. to hide in a trench coat, I think. So I'll have to try and bluff that one. Okay, so... Um, Patrick... I have an idea for that. Right, okay. So with the box, i seen as that... Um, so I'm pretty sure that Sarah's will, will be with the Royal um, Society as well. So we may be able to like, say that it's under jurisdiction by... The law of the queen, or something. I don't know. Right, that's not how it works. So no. 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 Absolutely not. Not in the case that it might be evidence in a crime. No. Um, so you're well, either we, gonna we, have. What to about if we just break it open and take whatever's inside? No, we are not breaking up a precious artifact. <laughs> you need there's. Well, you need somebody with with, <laughs> you, yeah, you need somebody with the right skills if you want to get into it without damaging it. So. What are you passing to Jimmy to try and smuggle out of here? Knife and a book. Knife and a book. So, Patrick, could you give mm-hmm. me a roll for Jimmy on his theft skill, please? Yep. Specific test would be ideal. Point of fact. That's going to be a pass. Yes. So, uh, it is a specific test, so I need to know how much by. So, what's your oh, skill? Right. Uh, 73. 73. So... 50, 60, 70, 29 you've passed by so that's a skill check that means you have a medium success which means you can conceal up to two items about your person <laughs> that's handy isn't it because <laughs> he's handed you two items that he's attempted mm-hmm. so you just see like Jimmy takes the, the knife and the book off you and just kind of as he's talking to you um, you just suddenly realise he's not holding them anymore but you didn't see his hands move at all. He was too busy concentrating on what he was saying. And you're like, how did he do that? It's <laughs> about at this point that the police arrive. Um, they come up the stairs uh, demanding to know what's going on. The, the fire brigade are here as well. Uh, one of the officers recognised Mercedes, kind of rolls his eyes. Colette. And, <laughs> Colette, sorry, yes. Um, uh, he recognises Colette uh, kind of rolls his eyes a bit oh dear I see the gutter presser here already I? oh don't you be starting this with me I, I wasn't phoned here and I was, I'm working on a piece for the Inverness Gazette and the, uh, I, get, I was down here to get some quotes for a Professor MacDonald a Professor Goff and a Professor Craig okay and uh I get told to meet up with some other people who are experts in their fields to come out here to get these quotes that was, they were, were they were going to. I says, I know you're going to laugh. I know you're going to laugh, but there was it was supposed to be about the Loch Ness monster oh. and the prehistoric origins of the Loch Ness monster. It's a serious study, of truth, man. Don't a serious, a serious study of the Loch Ness monster. Aye. <laughs> so anyway, that there's one in there. He's the Oxford, right? So you might not understand him because you know the English. <laughs> <laughs> and and I um yeah, but anyway, so I meet up with these people and we get the we get the underground out here. Get here, the doors open, the smoke pouring out. So I, I shouted for them to call the fire brigade. There's a man in the oven. There's an unconscious laddie there. I've found one of the uh, one of the professors is drowned in the bath, and it looks like somebody's hanged themselves in the study. So I think you're going to need a big wagon, and you're <coughs> going to need you're going to need the coroner. They're definitely so how, dead. I've checked. How many bodies have you found here? Three bodies, one guy unconscious. Right, get the, the ambulance man through here. I phoned you before my editor man. You better be grateful. <laughs> Can we get some assistance with this teenager, please? Uh, yeah, one of the officers takes a look at him and says, yeah, this is definitely a teenager. He's been struck across the back of the head by the... Oh, he's still alive. <laughs> Aye. 
Yes, the... Uh, Tell you there was one that was alive, doesn't The nice reporter did say the wall. You can see the ambulance man's now pushing his way through. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Yeah, we'd best get a... Uh, we'll best get a st stretcher up here for this uh, for this chap. So as the ambulance man's taken the casualty away... Um, yeah. You suddenly realise that the police are all eyeing you on very suspiciously. Um, and the officer that's been... Oh, don't start this. They've been dead for hours, man, and we've been here ten minutes. You can ask the nosy, the nosy woman at the ground floor. She'll have heard us come up the stairs. Oh, make a look roll and see if the nosy woman at the ground <laughs> floor was in. If need be, I could potentially use my private detective credentials to help a little bit. I don't know. Um, yeah, so... <coughs> is is that a animal. pass? That was me past my luck by 14. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll check. We'll make sure we know. Um, at the same time, I would also like, because both Colette and Alexis are trying to talk the police into things, could you give me a personality, uh, a, a specific personality check, please? Now, the officer is suspicious of you. But less suspicious because he does happen to know Colette. So mm. I'm going still to put failed. that on this. So you've failed. Okay, so he's, mm. he's still suspicious of you because he happens to know Colette. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. Oh, I passed by. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, my personality is 46. I rolled 29. So what's that? 17. Yeah. Okay, so on a 17, on that skill check, that's giving you a uh, mild success. Okay, so let me just see what that's going to do to a suspicious police officer. Uh, I think... Okay, so... Um, all right, well, I'm going to take everybody's name and address, and uh, can't, I need contact numbers from you. And if you're not la local, I'm going to need to know where you're staying. And you're not going to be able to leave Glasgow for a while until we give you the all clear. Because this is a multiple homicide we're investigating here. Yep, of course. As you can appreciate, you're... that's quite a serious... And while, while all this commotion's going on, I'm going to nip down the stairs and ask somebody if I can use the phone. Okay. You nip down the stairs and ask somebody if you can use the phone. I'm going to say somebody is going to say yes at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm going to phone my editor. <laughs> right, okay. You ring, <laughs> you ring the editor with the, the murder flat story. What story? <laughs> um, so I'll be dictating that out to so that they can get it in the earliest possible edition with my byline on it. And remember, I'm going to, you can probably hear my voice drifting upstairs and say, and remember that this time my byline is Alberta Moran, not a moron. <laughs> 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 okay, your editor agrees to, to use the to use the Alberta Moran byline, um, and is thankful for all the information about the story. Asks you to check a few details, which you mm -hmm. can do in not, not a great deal of time. You notice that the police are asking a lot of questions of your uh, um, fellow envoys. Mm. Um, I'm going to come up and stand behind them, making notes in my reporter's notebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you stand behind the police, making them nervous as they ask various questions of the... Uh, they've made it clear that none of you are to leave Glasgow until you are given the all clear. They also want contact details for all of you. Since none of you so, have actually organised anywhere to stay yet, this is a little so, tricky. Um, so, so uh, do, we need, do I need to get these, these folk, nice folks a lawyer then? Um... And, uh, I, the the police officer's sort of a little confused as to why you are suddenly um, separate from the them in question. <laughs> well, it is a little I bit am suspicious. I a fine, well, upstanding reporter. Make your mind but up. Do you think I bumped make, them all off for a byline? What's wrong with you? Make your mind up. Are you a fine, upstanding person or are you a reporter? You can't have both. Oh, that's <laughs> funny coming to one of, one of Her Majesty's constabulary. Were you hoping to maybe beat a confession out of one of us or something? <laughs> I'm just going to make a few notes here, right? I'll be like, no, I've got all your badge numbers, I know, I know you. So Come at this, at this point, 
Jimmy, you're really starting to sweat because you do not want these police officers looking any closer into I definitely do not. Yeah. So um, What I'm going to start doing is uh, jabbering to myself about the Loch Ness Monster. Right. <laughs> okay. So you're trying to come across as... Uh, an eyewitness of the, the Loch Ness Monster, which is definitely real. That's why I, I was called here. I want to talk about the Loch Ness Monster. Is anybody going to talk about the Loch Ness Monster? Because if we're not talking about the Loch Ness Monster, I don't really want to be here. I, I came to talk about the Loch Ness Monster. What's going on? Who's was that person over there? Uh, is the Loch Ness Monster here? I, I've, I've got some photographs that I, I want to look at. And <laughs> okay. on and on and on. Okay, give me a personality, a general, per, uh, no, a specific personality test. So we oh, can so see. I can see him be ending up in dark course. <laughs> <laughs> well, if this works, they'll want, just want rid of him for the time being. So, mm-hmm. um, so you rolled 84. <laughs> right. Shit. Okay, so um, the police officers are now taking more of an interest in you yeah. instead of less, which is what they're <sighs> aiming for. Okay. They're like, oh, okay, calm down, sir, calm down. Um, one of them kind of puts his hand on your shoulder and you think, hell if they start to search me they might find the um so you you, you change your tack realizing that this has mm-hmm. actually drawn more attention to you than you'd wanted it to eventually the police gather enough information and uh they, they give you a um an address of a b and b um okay. since you haven't organized anywhere to stay yet may i suggest this uh, also, you will need to call us by this evening to tell us where you are staying if you stay somewhere else. Um, so, need a telephone call for, from you in the next two hours to tell us where, where you're staying. And as I say, you're going to have to stay in um, Glasgow till we tell you it is okay. For you. I'll say yes, we're aware of the process. Uh... Has anybody <laughs> given them any false details? No. 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 No, no need. Okay. Well, <coughs> well, if they ask me for my details, I'm, I'll take the mickey at them. Yes. Well, uh, they already know you, who you are. Because I am, I'm a private investigator. Um, I'm also a lecturer as well. I can't, I don't have the information on where I would have my office. Presuming I would have one. You do have an office. It's wherever you um, live. It'll be in one of the nearby towns or cities. Yeah, I mean, I could tell them that if they want any further information, they could contact my office. But obviously, I'm not going to be there at the moment. You passed your per- yes. uh, personality test, didn't you? Okay. So overall, they're a bit more. Um, they're a bit happier with you. They're a bit less suspicious. Because you are a licensed um, private investigator, mm-hmm. despite what a lot of the television shows show, uh, that doesn't automatically make police suspicious of you. It makes them think, well, these people no. have gone through a licensing thing. Mm-hmm. So quite the, a lot you, are ex police, anyway. So. Yeah, quite a lot are, yeah. yeah. Okay, so they do eventually let you go, but you have lost a, a significant portion of the day. Um, yeah, we need to <laughs> investigate that boat at that time mentioned on the note as well. Mm-hmm. So um, that's 5.30 this evening. You arrived yes. in Glasgow at one thirty. You made your way here more or less immediately. So by 2 o'clock, you were probably in discussion with the police. The police yeah. have probably kept you for another half hour. So I'm going to say 2.30. So you've got about okay. three hours. Um, Can I point out Brother Pace's note? Yep. Which one? It says Iona Southwest Cliffs. Careful. Mm. Does that mean anything to the reporter? Since she lives around here, I guess. Iona. Uh, well, Iona's an island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, well, I thought it was a person, so. No, well, it could be a person because people name them for their children after it, but it's an island. Mm-hmm. What I find interesting okay. is the AG <clears throat> at the end, Assemblies of God. Of why it is like a, a unique set of priests interested in him? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, that's a question. Oh, I've just been reminded. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, you had that claw thing that you wanted us to take a look at, but I never did. Yes, um, I guess if we're in a safe wait, place. Wait, wait, did can... you see Assemblies of God? Mm-hmm. AG, yeah. Uh, it's just that there's, um, well, 
being a tow, some of you aren't Scots, you might not know this, but the most important burial site for kings in Scotland, going back to the pits, is on Iona. Okay. And Does it happen to be on the <laughs> South Cliffs? No, I, I couldn't tell you that. But I do know that it's also a massive, it's a monastery, it's, you know, it's, it's a holy, it's a religious site, and it's got a library. Maybe we should take a trip there, then. We've got a couple hours before we have to go to uh, the If we're going to go to Iona, one, it's going to take more than a couple of hours. Yeah, it's an okay. island. You'd have to travel to the, the port, get the ferry over, if the ferry's running. Right. The weather's all right. Go over there and then come back. There's no many places to stay on Iona unless you fancy sleeping in a grave. Right, um, okay. <laughs> uh, you do and then have we a contact at the monastery, say, though. Yeah, we did say don't <coughs> leave Glasgow. And Iona's quite a far way away from Glasgow. Mm -hmm. I see, okay. But you will now have to decide um, <coughs> about whether you are going to put your mission for safe ahead of your risk of being arrested <laughs> <laughs> i think being arrested we don't we don't want to get arrested because that would lead to a lot of trouble um yeah. and the police digging a little bit too deep into what we're doing um perhaps they will be okay with us leaving glasgow by tomorrow at some point maybe we could do yeah. what we need to do then well um, there's there's a couple of things we could do. First thing I'm going to say is, uh, um, we'd, I'm not going to say anything while we're still here, while the police are there, we're going to, I'm going to get well, them you're out. Not, you're not now. Yeah. Right, okay. I'm going to say to them, let's put some distance between ourselves and that flat. Aye? Mm -hmm. Now, we can go to my flat. I can't really put people up because it's not a very big flat, unless you fancy sleeping on the floor. Um, you're saving, boys. You've had to sleep in worse places. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but the one thing I'm going to say is those things we took out, I mm. don't want them at my flat. Mm -hmm. Because if they decide they're going to lift us, they'll search my flat and I don't want them there. So, I'm going to suggest we go back to the, on the way back to my flat, we go to the train station and we lock them in a locker. Yep. I agree with that. Can I show, um, once we're out of the way of the police and on the way there, can I show Remington the claw shaving? Yes, you can. I was going to ask would if I would say wait, wait till we're at my flat and then you can sit and do it at your leisure and comfort instead of looking at it in a Glasgow street. Okay. okay. I was, uh, was going to ask if we can go to like a library to do it, but your flat works too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it depends. If you take the the things straight to to be locked up are you, are you mm -hmm. going to get are you going to look inside this but are you going to try and look inside this box and well, where would you I don't want to I don't want to um, lock them up straight away actually right. I don't even need to go to a library I'll be able to go to um, one of the universities here I mean uh -huh. being a professor I'm sure I'll uh, be able to I don't know get a private room or something to study some artifacts I'm going to say yes I'm going to say yes and being a reporter, would you have an IBM computer? Yes. Like for basic typing and stuff, okay. Yeah. No. No, okay. Well, you'd no. have access to one, certainly. I'll have access to one at the offices. Oh, yeah, the offices. Of the probably news. Won't yeah, own one. Oh. but I probably won't own one because an IBM computer what, in, in the 80s <laughs> cost thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A okay. job and reporter wouldn't have one as a no. matter of course. You, you at home you'd have a typewriter. Aye. Yeah. Aye. But you would have Aye. access to one for, uh, for so the if he's, if he's asking me this in character, I'm gonna look at him as if as if he's fallen off the moon. <laughs> well, we better get going then, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Think yeah. we had. Bear in mind this is our Halloween special and we only have yeah. so long. Well, I <laughs> would like to go to a university so I can study the artifacts. That's what okay, I want to do. we'll say you manage to make a phone call to uh, the local university and arrange access to one of the uh, study rooms as a visiting professor. Um, okay. You, you get there and you are able to take the box from where uh, Jimmy's hidden it 
Oh, no, he's got the dagger, hasn't he? You've, you held the box. Yeah, I've got the box. He's it. got the dagger. Yeah. Claiming that it was your own. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, Jimmy, since you're carrying the dagger, could you give me one last um, sense unknown test on it, please? If this fails, then you'll not get another chance on it. Perhaps studying it, I might be able to find out what's wrong with it if you fail. It would help if I wasn't muted all the time. Right, I've, 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 I've started this sentence about six times, thought you weren't listening to me. Right, <laughs> um, before... Uh, which when we get to the the place where we're going to study these things, I was I was trying to say before anybody studies them at all, mm -hmm. I want to raise perception. So can I do that nice before one. I try my sense on none? Yes, you Ooh. can. Mm. Okay, so it cost you eight willpower to do it, so it was expensive, but yep, uh, that looks like a pass to me. It is a pass, yes. It is a pass to you. Yep, excellent. So your everybody's perception goes up by ten. Ooh, nice. Which means everybody's um, sense of none goes up by 2% as well. So oh, any yeah. perception based attribute, uh, any perception based skill will also go up. So, investigation, for example. How long does this last? I'll, I'll, now, I'll now give you that sense of none. Yeah. So, you're 2% higher than you were, 41. You've still missed it, unfortunately. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so you're all a little bit suspicious about the nature of this dagger because it looks ritual. It's got a, a ram's head on it. It doesn't look like the kind of dagger you could actually feasibly use in combat. It looks ritual to some degree. Mm. Um, when you get to the university and set the box down and the dagger next to it and whatnot, um, you, what are you doing at that point with it? Because the box is still locked and you never did find the key. Well, I'll ask if anyone can open it. Careful. Does anybody have uh, security devices as a skill? I do. Okay. Make a test if you'd like to try and open it. <laughs> At any, like, slight movement or any sharp movement, I'm going to be wincing because I don't want this artifact uh, damaged. Oh, oh no. don't I've worry. Passed, I've passed, actually passed that by 70. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You take a look at it and go... I could pick this with a hairpin and then uh, <laughs> produce from um, your handbag a set of lockpicks. <laughs> None of you saw those, by the way. None of you. <laughs> so what? Right. Which you quickly unpick the lock with. and it... right. oh, it's... it's something that every investigative reporter needs. Absolutely. I must say, Mom, very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> So Mom. inside the wooden uh, the wood box, you find a scrap of parchment, upon which is written an ancient poem written in Irish Gaelic. Mm. That's odd, because earlier it told me it was written in Sanskrit. So which is it? Mm. <laughs> ah, right. Yes, I see. Interesting. So the script is scanned Sanskrit. I do say, but. The language is Irish Gaelic. This is extremely rare because this shows a connection, another connection between mm -hmm. um, India and the Celts. Something that um, social scientists have been looking for for 50, 60 years. And mm. I do say this is quite fascinating. Do you have any idea how... Uh, Important Fine. this find is. It is huge. Three important. men. Can I just point out? Three men had possession of this and they all died. I think I've guessed it's a bit important. <laughs> mm, Could quite. I get that um, ancient languages from Sir Osmond, please? Absolutely, sir. That's most definitely a pass. Most definitely a pass. In that case, you get to translate it. It takes you another a uh, couple of hours to translate it so we've now gone it's about I'll five o'clock if you wanted to meet that uh, um, that appointment with the boat you would have to consider doing so soon but you, that would bring you in conflict with the police so um, but anyway it's now five o'clock the okay. by the time you've cracked this because you had to translate the Sanskrit into ancient Gaelic and then the Gaelic then Gaelic's into English. English. <laughs> but now that you've succeeded, you've found that it is this. I was grinning the entire time. Oh, absolutely. 
Three <laughs> beasts there were from the hollows of the moon, from the back of her head where no light rises. One, the branch-headed stag in the darkness. One, the bull, the trunks of its legs driving. One, the snake, the deadly tendril of root in the grass. Three beasts there were from the hollows of the moon. Three. With the, this is this is where I get complaints about my uh, pronunciation. So, uh, <laughs> dh nine radio at mail dot com for anybody who complains about my uh, mispronunciation of a famous Irish hero. But here we go. I think we'll give it a try. <laughs> Three were the tasks of fierce Cucullin, in the meadow of nightmares littered with dead. One was death of the branches, descending out of a swarm of oak out of a climate of horrors. Strangling the air, tearing down the stars. One was the death of the oak bull, rising out of the blood-sprinkled earth, out of the dying, splintering sky, mocking the path of the sun. One was the death of the root, striking out at the murderous ground, out of the grave. Cracking the floor of the world, tangling the dead. Three were the tasks of fierce Cucullin. Three were the tasks, and three were the answers. <clears throat> there, at the waning of ravens, the land's end. One was for the rainfall that drowned the branches. One, the noose that gallowed the oak trunk. One, the cleansing of fire through the tendrils. Three beasts there were from the hollows of the moon. Three were the tasks of fierce Cucullin. Three were the tasks, and three were the answers. Well, the last bit is exactly how the three people were seen dead. Yeah, mm -hmm. it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel so we should go dun 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 at that point. What time of year is it at the moment? It is July, late July. Oh. First of August is the Lognasa. Yes. It yeah. is. Yes. Ha. <laughs> the no no night no. after tomorrow night in point of fact. Ah, uh, okay. Two nights you have to deal with whatever this problem seems to Crap. be. <laughs> because all the clues would rather suggest that whatever's going on is going to come to a crescendo very on, soon. On the 1st of August. These are the tasks of this Kukulain. Does anyone know what a Kukulain is? Then? Kukulain's a famous Celtic warrior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. F famous Irish Celtic oh, warrior. warrior. Um, Doesn't explain the claw marks, though. Need to read the Mabinogion. Yes. Hmm. What's the current phase of the moon? Uh, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, the current phase of the moon, let me just have a look. Well, Lugnasa is one of the quarter days, isn't it? So it's it is. coming towards mm -hmm. our full. Yes. So we'd be um, a full, not quite a full, it'd be a three quarters three waxing. Quarter, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's on about the death of the branches, the death of the oak bowl, and the death of the root. I was going to say, could that be a reference to the tree of life? It could be. It's to say, I won the snake, the dead really tendril or root in the grass. Could it mean you've got to use the dagger to cut some tree roots or something i don't know is is there any kind of uh, corresponding motif on the dagger to any of the beasts that are mentioned uh, there's a ram's head hand uh, ah, handle, that's like it. the head of the uh, handle is a, a ram's head but isn't it can that, it's brian a pointy thing yes brian. um it's a so... ram-headed snake on the hilt sorry you are quite right it is a ram-headed snake yeah. That's why I was thinking of snake when I with the dagger. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, there is a there is a connection. Also, if anybody happens to have legends and law or a similar skill, now I was going to ask. Yeah. Would my um, anthropology 
do anything. Uh, yes, but you. I'm going to reduce your success level by one step. Um, okay. So give me an anthropology, archaeology. That's a pass by almost uh, 74, I think. Bloody hell. Right, okay, so that's gone. Oh, that's a heavy result. So yes. You ram-headed snake, you know what this is. You've seen it. Mm-hmm. You've seen to- uh, text that mention it before. And the very thought of it sends your blood cold. Because the ram-headed snake is the deity Kernanos. Oh, yes. Yeah. I do say this uh, This is uh, referencing... The deity Kurlanos. Indeed. In physical form, Kurlanos' body usually looks like a a ten-foot-long serpent, uh, nearly two feet in diameter, but its head is that of a a ram with massive curling horns. Mm -hmm. It may... Oh, no, no, that's that's game-related stuff. It may also change its form. Um, It's known to also take the form of a bull, a worm, or or three cranes. Whoa, whoa! Hang on a second. Can, can it take the form of a dagger? No. Okay. Oh, hey, whoa, that whoa. would be did that would be terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> did you say the body of a snake with a weird kind of with a ram's head type head? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the Loch Ness monster. Similar. Yeah. Because mm. the photo oh, they show you, it's like a serpent. But it's got a weird head. It's near the head of a snake. It almost looks, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like a sheep. Be the it, I've never seen it horns, but you know, a stag is another. The blood splintered, sprinkled earth out of the dying, splitting sky, mocking the path of the sun reminds me of poppies. Right. Yes. Mm. Well, there's there's a lot of legends. A lot of Celtic legends where they say, you know, when a brave warrior dies, that flowers spring up. Flowers are important in Celtic legend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's me talking it out of character, by the way, there. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that it, are we going to try and get to this date with the boat? Because if. Yes. We, right. Yeah. We need well, to the boat is obviously a forest. We need to go now, I think. I think... I'm going to phone, I'm, but what we're going to do first is I'm going to phone that police station and tell them you're all seen with me, but due to shock and exhaustion, we're not going anywhere till tomorrow morning. Right, yeah. Nice and then I'm unplugging the phone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oswald um, wants to stay and research this um, creature that's came. I forgot its name already. But I, I want to research this deity. Can I make a suggestion? Right. Mm-hmm. We've looked at the diagram, we've looked at the box. Has anybody looked at the book? And we haven't looked at the spiky claw thing either. No. No. You've no idea what a spiky claw is. It just isn't. Right, really. let's make a. Let's uh, make... You can for, somehow compare it to like maybe an exotic animal or something, like similar. Just um, know. Yes, make a zoology test. Okay. That's a pass by. Uh, 16. Okay. Yeah. So the shape of the hook 61. is very similar <laughs> to that of a domestic cat. But there has never yeah. been a breed of cat as big as this. Oh, God. Who's breathing mm, down the face? Does, that was me, uh, I think. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. What does my archaeology friend think? Or anyone else who may know? My specialty is not cat. Yeah, Everybody can make archaeology. one final um, sense unknown test as you pass this two. thing quick, around. Quick, quick question. Yes. Um, did we find two sheets of amber? Yes, there were two sheets of amber, one either side of that uh, uh, document that was written in Sanskrit but translated from that into um, right. Just Irish taking. Group. Just taking a look at those sheets of amber, are, are there are there any trapped insects or a, a, anything untoward within them? There aren't, but as you look at the trapped, um, uh, at the amber, something occurs to you. Both of these sheets of amber seem to have come from um, the same, much larger sheet. 
Mm -hmm. You can tell because the brick down one side of the, the amber fits perfectly to the next one. So that means that this sheet of amber, even if you've got the entirety of it here and you're feeling that there was more, but even if you, if it was just this, would still be about the size of an A3 sheet of paper. That's a, that's a large sheet of amber, and you think this has come from an even larger sheet. Mm. Mm. Interesting. It, it does, but look, looking at the text through the amber, is anything obscured, or, or does anything stand out more than it might otherwise do? Okay, you start taking a look through the, the um, sheet um, of amber to see if anything else stands out. Uh, and something odd happens when you do this. You start to see very, very faint lines on the uh, uh, on the parchment that people had mistaken for just folds or creases or some mm. kind of um, uh, problem in the paper. Uh, but in point of fact, it's highly unlikely it occurred naturally. Because when viewed through the sheet of amber, it is a picture of a ram-headed serpent. <laughs> uh, yeah. Confirms our suspicions. Mm -hmm. Now then, did anybody pass their uh, sense unknown? Remembering you're still nope. at plus ten. I, I haven't taken it yet. No. No. Okay. Did you say plus ten? Yep. Oh, oh plus two. <laughs> Yeah, that's what plus I thought. Sorry, yeah. plus perception. two. Yeah, plus two. It's plus ten for perception, which translates to plus two. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. No, none of us going it. Oh, no, we're not that lucky, man. Yeah, so you you haven't been able to tell <clears throat> if the uh, the dagger has any significance either. Mm -hmm. So who's going to meet the boat and who's not going to Iona? I'm not. You're I'm not going, going, going to Iona. Iona. Can I just see the other note, please? Yeah. It should be in. Uh, oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm saying that in character. Oh, sorry. Pass it over to yeah. you. And I'm going to look at, at that through the amber. Okay. Nothing changes. On that. Okay. That's written on modern paper as well. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be going to this boat meeting okay. time thing. So, presumably, everybody except. Um, Oswald. Sir, so posh boy is good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say to him, how good a liar are you? Excuse me? It's a member of the British aristocracy Sorry, so pretty pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm asking you how good a liar you are. It's not about your character, it's because if I plug the phone in, you need to convince I I won't have to lie, Mom. I uh, I am doing research into an highly uh, highly delicate piece of history. And when they say, "And where are your companions? How are you going to respond?" I have no idea. <laughs> I have been too focused oh, on no, my work. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, what you need to say to them, right, is something that would be plausible for us no being there. But that doesn't imply that we've buggered off to Iona. Can you come uh, up with something like that, maybe? Well, I am at the university. The last time I saw you, you were uh, at your apartment. You're so at I'll my apartment. Um, you'll be at my apartment. We'll all be buggered off to Iona. So we need you to tell them any lie you can think of that might be plausible. So long as you don't tell them that we've gone to Iona. Of course. They used to say that we went to Iona. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> definitely not on a boat to Iona. <laughs> oh my I mean... god, don't say that again. <laughs> okay, so... I'm going to phone my editor and say to him, I'm on to something. <clears throat> if the police come looking, I'm on to something big. But don't tell me. Mm. I've got some, Egypt, some English Egypt out of Oxford sitting in my house. <laughs> I don't think you can tell them a plausible lie, so they'll come to you, come up with something. I can't tell you where I'm going, and I, I, I'll, but I'm onto something big. Okay. So, um, go on. Sorry, I was just going to say, I'll ask Oswald if he gets a moment to perhaps 
call save and update the on the situation. Okay. Yeah, so Oswald can do that. He can be calling the save to update them on the situation, due, uh, probably tomorrow when the Dublin office reopens. Um, <coughs> remember, this is a small, uh, well, relatively small, considering it's, it covers the world, but it's an organisation that's largely self-funded and ha operates under the, in, in secret, so everybody's a volunteer for the most part. Mm -hmm. So it unfortunately does mean... It tends to keep office hours, or the office tends to keep office hours. <laughs> so, uh, you all head down to the docks and find the ship, or the boat, as it turns out. It's a sh uh, fishing trawler. Um, mm. And Captain um, Captain Donald, who is the um, who is the captain and also the person mentioned in the note, he seems quite surprised to see you. He says, uh, especially when you introduce yourselves. Well, how do you introduce yourselves? We're probably going to have to tell him that his son's immortal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he knows his son's in hospital. He's been to visit him. He says his right. son's uh, recovering nicely. Um, he doesn't, however, want to... Um, he, obviously, he was expecting um, the professor. He didn't quite know what's going on. His son didn't know that the professor was dead. He was unconscious at that, at that point, so this is news to him when you tell him. Um, he says he was expecting the professor, and he did feel he needed to be here because he has already been paid, but he does want to get back to the hospital to be with his son, even though he knows his son's safe now um, mm. and is recovering. Does have yeah. a concussion. Going um, to have to explain to him what's happened to the professor. <laughs> Maybe not the details of it, but you know. Okay. He seems quite shocked and horrified by um, your tale of mm -hmm. bizarre murder. So um, he's curious as to what you're doing here then. So, well, uh, we found this note in your son's hand uh, when we happened upon the scene. Uh, the um, professor had already paid to have me take him over to the island. He has an appointment there with some uh, brother from the Monastery of St. Columbo. Well, we were meant to join the professor um, in his investigation. Uh, so we're here to potentially take his place. Uh, well, I was only expecting three, but I, I think we can squeeze... I think we can squeeze the four of you on. I don't think it'll be too big a problem. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, perhaps... Uh, we could... Do we have any money? <laughs> that you, we could I mean, you'll, that you will money. have some money. Um, you'll have your own money. But this is the sort of thing that would be covered by save, so you would... The way it would work would be you would pay for it and then keep the receipts and reclaim it from safe. Very, very old school, because we are dealing with the 1980s here. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back about two minutes. <laughs> right. Sorry. Ah, I think she means like she will actually be right back in two minutes. Okay, so um, you slip him a little bit extra bribe to comfort him to the fact that his, his son's... Uh, um, injured, so he reluctantly agrees to take you as agreed with the the professor. You set sales probably the wrong term because it's a, it's a um, diesel engine. It's uh, puttering along through the the rough sea to the Isle of Iona. When you arrive there, you see that the island itself is largely featureless uh, and barren. There's rolling hills, there's not much in the way of trees or, um, it's, in fact it's windy, it's cold, it's wet, this is not an ideal place for people, never mind trees. There, there are a few buildings scattered about the island, including the monastery, which is the largest of them all. But on the northern side, the old quayside, owned by the monastery of Columbus, you find a single man, dressed for the weather, He's dressed in sort of heavy oil skins to keep the rain and the wind and the water off him. Um, but as you pull up and get out of the the boat, he kind of he acknowledges Captain Donald. And Captain Donald says, this is the man you've come to see. This is Brother Pace. 
the man in the oilskins kind of shuffles forward and says, uh, Professor Goff? I'm sorry to have to tell you, but he's met with an untimely end. Oh, that's something of a shock. We only we only corresponded recently. Um, he <laughs> and two colleagues were found murdered in his flat earlier today. He looks very shocked when you say this. You can see the colour drain out of what little of his face you can actually see through all the uh, uh, the oil skins and the uh, sou'wester he's wearing and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Murdered? My dad, I'm afraid so. Why would anybody murder the professor? Um, <coughs> we're hoping that we can find that out. We've left it in the hands of the Glasgow police, but I don't have a great deal of confidence. Well, so we are really. hoping. <laughs> we're thinking maybe the research that he's undertaken at the moment has been a contributing factor. So we're here well, to wrong. glean what we can. Rather hope not, as I've been assisting with his, his research as best I can. Um, I recently found something very odd and sent it to two of them to investigate uh, still further. Strange. It was a, a wooden box, <coughs> but it was it was where I found it. We found it in a strange monolith on one of the cliffs. Mm-hmm. Um, there are carvings on the monolith that have puzzled people for generations. And I was taking a rubbin, and as I took the rubbin, a section of the monolith just fell out and revealed sort of a secret chamber, a compartment really, it's too small to be a chamber, a secret compartment within. And inside I found the box. But, uh, so I sent it to the, um, the professor. Mm-hmm. As he's distracted speaking, uh-huh. I just want to I want to position myself somewhere out of his eye line. Yeah. Um have have a good look over him and take a look at him uh through one of the sheets of amber. Okay. Um you'd see nothing different apart from he looks a bit more amber when you look at yes. the sheet of okay. amber. A little bit more indistinct because of the, the, yeah. the way the light refracts through it. But nothing untoward at all. Um, and other than the normal symbols and trappings of a monk, is he wearing anything else identifiable? Uh, not really. He's got a sou'wester and a, a oil skin on because of the, right, the, the okay. weather being a bit inclement at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. Despite the the time of year, it's, it is a bit rough out here. You realise actually, it's not a great deal of it is is rain. It's mostly crash and surf that's spraying right across the the key um, and he's obviously aware that this happens a lot so he's come dressed for it uh you lot on the other hand haven't so you're like you're pretty pretty soaked at this point you're quite wet with uh sea water um, so when i i don't know where to begin i don't know whether to take you to the monastery so you can take a look at what few documents we we might have that might be of assistance or whether to take you to see the the monolith itself which is what the doctor what the professor actually came to see. Let's go and have a look at the monolith first and then go back. We're, we're not going to get anywhere. It's through the skin now. As you will. Okay, I'll just take you over to the next map. Um, for those who are interested, this is a composite map made it, made by a number. Um, I put it together from stuff that I bought on the Roll20 um, marketplace. Brian. Uh, so this isn't... Yes, go ahead. Can I steal someone's vision? Just so can... I can see as well. Uh, yes, I will give you the vision of um, Brother Pace, perhaps. So, controlled by... And that's not opening anything up. So I've crashed. Ah. <laughs> is what's happened now. So we're going to blame Ben for that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I accept full responsibility. As of course you should. Hello, um, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> hello. Uh, we're just having a slight issue with the fact that my it's Jenny's um, false god, Jenny. Roll twenty <laughs> seems to have crashed, so I'm just going to attempt oh, no. to reload it. I'm passing the blame on. It's like hot potato. 
Did I miss anything other than that? You crashed, Brian. Yeah, you crashed me. Uh, you've arrived at Iona. You've had a quick word yeah. with uh, Brother Pierce, who seems very okay. shocked and surprised to hear of the professor's death. Also, right. you got the impression from the way he responded when you arrived um, mm -hmm. that he he was wondering if one of you were Professor Pierce, which means you think he's never seen him, never met him before. Okay. Um, okay, so I've managed to load back in. So let me just give um, uh, Ben. Oh, God, it's crashed again. Oh, no. It's going to keep crashing, then it's like, it's okay, I'll just use my imagination. Thanks, <laughs> I know. Page on the of mind. You can wait for it to become... Ah, there we go. Um, it has... Uh, so it's also added Patrick, um, which it wasn't supposed to do, so I'll just take you back off. Save those settings. You should now be able to see through Brother Pace. And now I'm going to dr bring the other oh, player yeah. characters over there. So oh, the water's in, animated. The water is <laughs> animated, yes. Um, so there you are, coming through there. Collect the Clafferty. Okay, collect the Clafferty. Um, Alexis Strange. Um, oh, he's done it. Uh, no. And uh, Jimmy. Looks cool. Mm. There you go. So, um, it takes you across the open island. If you had hoped to go unnoticed here, then those hopes are dashed by the fact that you realise the the island has virtually nothing for cover. There's no plants. There's th <laughs> well, there's grass. Um, it's the occasional <laughs> thistle. But there's nothing large enough to conceal you. There are no trees. Um, the rolling hills kind of go from the cliffs of the, the sea up into the middle. So from the monastery, for example, people would, would easily be able to see you crossing um, right. to where you're going now, of course, which is you should all now see the map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm just going to adjust GM opacity so that there we go, that's better. So the stuff that's on the Games Master's layer isn't confusing the uh, viewers at home, uh, wondering why you can't see. <laughs> okay, so it brings you here where you find um, this here is the uh, stone monolith. It's actually okay. not as pretty as it looks there. That's the best I could find. Um, it's, <laughs> it's very roughly carved and it's been weathered over hundreds of possibly thousands of years um, mm. it's also 15 feet down the cliffside uh, on this small area so this bit of the cliffs 15 feet this bit's another 70 or so roughly so if you went over there you'd know about it mm. and then you would know about nothing else you are warned that there is a path down but it's narrow it's rocky. It's uh, it tends to make people uncomfortable because sometimes bits of it break away and fall into the sea. Oh, great, wonderful! So you <laughs> should be very careful. Probably, it's quite crowded down there if we take this many people. So you might you might want to go down in features. shifts. Just jump down. Uh, no. <laughs> you could climb down, but you couldn't jump down safely. <laughs> Uh, I guess. Does, none of you, does anyone have roll? Is that we a thing? A, we have a lasso. Uh, we have. Let's see. You did say fifteen feet, not fifty, right? Fifteen. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I imagine if you used a lasso, you could climb down that. Maybe. Um, yes. Tie it on too, though. On um, the other, on this side. Mm, yeah. Good point. Not really. Yeah. There's there's no trees or anything. One of y'all can hold it. Boy, designated yeah, tree. That's not going to be safe. No, I think we just <laughs> try go down the path. We're just going to have to be careful and Aye. go in like two groups, maybe. Okay. So huh? those of you who are going down, uh, move yourself in the appropriate direction. Okay. Who wants to go in the first group? <laughs> go. Who's going to be the first to die? Oh, God. I'm going to go in the first group because I'm an in the intrepid guild reporter and I want to see this first. Okay. 
So could you move your um, token over with the other one? Does anyone have astrology, by the way, or astronomy? No. No. Okay. Brian, let me be an astronaut. Then I would. <laughs> God, Brian. Astrology. <laughs> That's something oh. very different. <laughs> I think I've seen the stars lined up with the. I am because okay. I'm the avatars of my page are huge. I'm just trying to figure out how to make them smaller. Uh yeah, it's it's in the cog, mm. and then it's audio and video under video display. There you go. Yeah. Names names only. Names the smallest. Only. That's one. what I usually do. Yeah. Move you over for now because time mm -hmm. is passing. Right, so um, you move along the top of the cliff to this entryway, and then you're going to have to go single file f sort of through there and through there. So organize yourselves into a march. Let me go area. first, ladies. Well, I guess the reporter might want to go first. Oh, she, okay. <laughs> Up to her, though. <laughs> Marie, I think we need a response from you. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to go down the path. I said I'm going to go down the path first. Yeah, but people are actually out first, right? Okay. Right. Okay. So you're going down there. Could everybody who's going down there, you're going to like this, give me an agility test, please? Oh, Just a general God. one will be fine. Agility. Um, one of the pace is going to stay at the top and shout encouragement. Well, that was kind of rubbish. I think I probably didn't do very well there. Okay, so all oh, of the... <laughs> me and me. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God, that's a critical Yeah, that was a... Yeah, I... Oh, oh my God. God. Fuck. You Alexis did worse than me. I failed, but you two catastrophically did. Alexis and Juby go, ah! Is this actually it's the death not, of the party? No, it's not actually bad enough for any of you to fall over the cliff. However... You do come close. You, as you're going down, part of the cliff breaks away. You all kind of panic a little bit, flatten yourself against it. Brother Pierce says, be careful. Be careful. I did say it has a tendency to break away. Right, those of you who failed, you take uh, D5 damage. So I'm going to roll. Um, in fact, each of you just roll a D10, half it, and round up. That's how many stamina points you lose. <laughs> Fuck but you sick. do not need to take a wound box. You only take stamina damage from this. Mm, lucky one. Oh my god. Okay. Alexis took so much damage. <laughs> oh. And eventually you do make it because a lot of that stamina damage is like, you know, breathing quickly, turning your ankles, the, the um the stress and the strain of the whole circumstance. So you've not taken any wounds, just stamina damage. Remember... So, ha so having rolled one, does that mean I take one damage or...? Yes. Yeah. I take a duck side. I think Alexa, because she's behind Jimmy, she's going to go, ah, and grab onto his trench coat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Help! <laughs> oh. so, let me close this up in there. so you grab Jimmy's trench coat and like, Help! Uh, as you think for a moment you're about to plunge to your death. Fortunately for you, you don't. Uh, you'll be pleased to hear. All, all of the pockets tearing, various wallets and cash just fall out. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Stole up fair and square. <laughs> okay, so um, we are at the monolith, so I'll just pop that out so I can read it without it impeding my view of the, sh the screen. So the monolith is located on a ledge some 15 feet down the cliff. From here, the rest of the cliff is 70 feet to the rocks and surf far beneath. There's a crumbling weathered path which you have stumbled down. Um, <laughs> uh, and by the time you get to the monolith, so you can move yourselves over to this sort of area, by the time you get to the monolith, you're all kind of slightly bruised and battered and tired and frightened because you almost fell off the cliff, you felt. Yeah. What you find here is this ancient carved monolith hacked out of rock that looks to you to be different to the rock around the cliff. Furthermore, there are engravings uh, all around it 
but the engravings are faint very very faint there is a hole in it as well where the the um the panel that uh, Brother Pace told you had fallen out where that's where that's come out. The panel itself is still on the ground next to it, broken in two. Inside so that hole is nothing now, but you can see that it would have been big enough to hold that box you found the amber and the uh, the poem in. Right. Okay, um, I'm gonna. I'm, I, I, I mean, if, if I may first, because this will be a benefit to everybody, is, is my race perception still active? No, no, not anymore, because that'll have been hours ago when we last used can, it. Can I drop that again then, please? Yes, you can. Give us another roll for it. Okay, that looks like a pass to me. You've spent a lot of willpower again, mm -hmm. but uh, everybody gets plus 10 on their perception, which mm -hmm. means anybody's perception-based skills will also go up appropriately as well. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. That's okay. All I was going to do was I was going to rip some sheets out of my... Because the brother said he was taking a rubbing. Yes. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear some sheets out of my reporter's notebook. Okay, I'm going to put them second. against the opposite side from the hole on the, the obelisk. Mm -hmm. Obelisk. And then I'm going to attempt to do a rubbing with my reporter's pencil. Okay. <laughs> So you make a rubbing um, as best you can. What you find is the engraving shows uh, the large head of a beast rising from water where the blood of sacrificed horses is spreading across the water as part of some grim ceremony. Hmm. How many sides does the monolith have? It has four sides. In total. Right. One with a right. sucking great hole in it now. Mm. Okay. Has anybody got like a, a flat a, a torch or something? Can we? We, we all do. That? Yeah. Right, let's do. shine a, Let's shine the torches into the hole and see if we can see any carving, any you know, any anything more that might. Okay. So you you peer into the um, into the hole that was revealed in the monolith, and you can find in there nothing uh, mm -hmm. at all. Just. It's kind of gathered a little bit of moisture since it was it was, it was open, but other than that, um, nothing within there. But it does look large enough to have been where the the mm -hmm. box once sat. Does Is... anybody have archaeology or anthropology? Mm, he's not here. No. <laughs> no. I've been studying. Uh, this is massively meta game, so none of you will know this. But I think that the whole, like, in the meadows of nightmares, blah, 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 I think those are locations of the boxes or more monoliths. Could be. Which cardinal direction is the hall, the compartment in? If this is, is this aligned to, like, north, south, east, west? Uh, not really. It's kind of at a, a more of an angle. So that, it, that, that hall would be to the north, east. There are warnings of ravens or lands. What about a well. ley line? Could be a ley line for all you know. What what is northeast of here? Is it, is it is that just the way we came and it's just the port? Well, it's it's not a port. This is a tiny what? island. A dock. It's a key. There's yeah. no buildings on the key. Um, well, if you go by the poem again, it keeps mentioning oak. You all got to find an oak forest. You're not going to find, find an oak it on forest, Iona. Either. Not on Iona. No, as I've mentioned several times, there are no trees on Iona. Tree. Yeah, the, mm. Sc the Scottish islands haven't had trees on them for thousands of years. Mm. Um, okay, so I'm going to have a look at the cover for the compartment that's on the ground. Yes. I'm going to look at, because obviously that will have fallen outwards, so the outer of it will be facing the ground, mm -hmm. but the inner of it is facing upwards, so I'm going to have a look and see if there's anything on that. Nothing at all. Right. So then I'm going to tip it over and attempt to take a rubbing of okay. the two broken halves. So taking a rubbing of the two broken halves, what you find is that one engraving, uh, the, sorry, the engraving here shows a ram-headed snake in some form of mm -hmm. room or chamber. Dead horses lie about the strange creature. Mm -hmm. The amber. Use the amber. Yeah, to, uh, the very next thing I was going to say, honestly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the amber and see if if the the monolith has anything that, that shows up. P 
peering including, through, including the cover, sorry. Peering through the amber, you notice that the third engraving on the, the third side um, is um, missing part. There are entire lines that it looks as if they're weathered away. But when you peer it through the second sheet of amber, you discover they're not weathered away. You can actually see those lines in that piece of amber. If you align it up properly, the picture becomes apparent. And the picture is another engraving showing a second chamber. Three creatures there stand among piles of bones. But the creatures are indistinct and indiscernible uh, due to heavy weathering. So parts of the weathering were real and parts of the weathering were not really weathering. It was just that part of the drawn was in the amber. Um, we have a dagger with us. Yes, you've got the dagger with you. Is there anything on the obelisk that seems like it could be a key slot or a slot or a slit or something? Um, give me a specific perception test, please. What would I be rolling? D one hundred under perception. Okay. Don't forget your your plus. Yes, your perception is now ten points higher than it would have been. Mm-hmm. So remember that when you make the roll. So pass by ten. You passed by ten. Right. Okay. So your perception must be quite high then. Sorry, not <laughs> ten. Um, eight. Right. It's eighty-two basically at the moment. It's 82 at the moment. Yeah, okay, that's a pass by 8. So let me just check. That's an ability check. 8. Yep, yeah, you've heard something. You thought I was going to say seen something because you were looking at things, but no, you've heard something. You've heard a thunderous drumming sound, like heavy hooves on... Jumanji. Yeah. <laughs> My God. <laughs> you can see that the, uh, the monk must have seen it as well because he started to look around and he's... Is yelling something down towards you. Okay. Mm-hmm. You odd. It seems to be. He seems to be shouting something about about bolts. Shit. Bolts. <laughs> well, but it's one of the forms. It's one of the things from the task of Kukulain. We need to find some way to hide. I'm going to yell up to him. Hide. Hide. There's, like... there's nowhere to hide. He starts to panic. We're, come we're, down. We're, 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 come we're, we're, down we're, here now. Come down here. I can't. They're between me and the entrance. Okay. Just jump down. They'll catch you. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, I'm going to sprint for the path upwards. Okay. But I'm going to snatch the dagger off whoever's got the dagger first. Okie dokie. I think we're going into action time here then. So, here <laughs> we go. Uh, be this one here. I've not done this. Uh... On this thing, on this side for a long time. I'll, I've a, been recording all this stuff on my little um, tape recorder. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to shove that at uh, Alexis, and I'm going to see here if I die, give that in my editor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Try not to die. So, how the hell do I add this to? <laughs> uh, I can't remember how you add things to the initiative tracker uh, when it doesn't have an initiative start. So, help. <laughs> <laughs> what do you oh mean? You can show us token action? I have no clue. Yeah, <coughs> sure it will be a token action once. Um, how many times have I done this? And I've current because I think we usually do have an initiative uh, attribute to it. So I yeah. think I'm going to have to do this. Believe it or not, old school bit of paper. I think is what's is Yay. what's coming my way. Um, so your initiative level will depend entirely upon your um, thing, not dexterity, though agility. 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 So I need to buy bulls. So the bulls agility is uh, thirty. So um, I'll just go around and ask uh, Colette, what's hers? Forty-eight. Colette, forty-eight. 
Okay, so it is uh, Aiden next. 50. 50, yeah. And uh, Alexa? Uh, 36. Alexa, stop. <laughs> you can have uh, to see if it's straight. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy? 52. Jimmy, 52. Okay, so we have uh, Jimmy first. Then Aiden, then Colette, uh, then I can't read that. Oh yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the Bulls. Okay, so Jimmy, what would you like to do? These three uh, Bulls have kind of come thundering across the the landscape towards. Uh, they probably not that far in yet, actually. So I'll put them back a bit. So they. Mike. Can I assume that they are supernatural in nature? You can make the assumption if you would like to. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Whether you're right or not is a different matter, but it's unusual behaviour for them. Casting sphere of protection. Right. Okay. So, give me a uh, test for sphere of protection. So let me have a look. So, uh, oh, <laughs> well, you've definitely passed, but it Run. hasn't cost you a lot of. Uh, Yep. A lot of energy again. I so, don't come to roleplay to not use powers. That's very true. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so Sphere of Protection, uh, Art, page 52. Let me just have a look. I'll just read out what happens then, shall I? Mm -hmm. Sphere of Protection. Clarify pressure team, restoring willpower. Uh, sphere of Protection. If successful, which it was, the user raises an invisible sphere of protection power which protects all characters and animals within it from all creatures and any form of attack, Ooh. even disciplines of the evil way. The sphere deflects all missile attacks while allowing the protected characters to use their missile weapons outwards. Okay. Very nice. So raised mm -hmm. uh, sphere of protection. It doesn't really tell me the... Ah, this it does. The sphere has a 15-foot radius. Yeah, right, okay. Um, so I'm going to activate an effect on uh, your character, which will be... It's a long time since I've done this as well. Token aura, 15 feet, uh, circle. Um, we'll make it green because it's protection, and that seems logical. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I don't know whether players are going to be able to see this or not. I think if I tick that, you can. So can you see a green sphere around yes. Jimmy? You can. Brilliant. So, currently, all of you are standing within it. Um, <laughs> those of you who have uh, the ability to sense unknown, you don't need a rule for this, you are aware <coughs> that you are inside a sphere of protection. Just foom. Okay. Um, it's, is this the, sorry. <coughs> it's um, largely invisible to most people, but you can just faintly see it. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. Um, if it's a sphere, that means it arches inwards. Would the, would uh, the brother still be protected up there, or not? Um, yes, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Right. So, Aiden, you to go. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you've got um, a point because it's only 15 feet high, isn't it? And that's the height of the. You're <clears> right. <throat> he isn't protected. No. Um. Can I can I can I speak as a free action? Yeah. Okay, so it's brother. What was his name? Pierce. Brother Pierce, come towards me. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, go ahead, Aiden. What are you going to do? So, um, you think these are magical? Could be. So okay, um. I don't know what to do exactly. We're like it, we're down a cliff. They have the high ground, mm -hmm. and I have a a lasso. Okay, uh, you, you can hold like action. I'll hold my action then. <laughs> I don't so, know what to do. Colette, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm. If everybody's protected, then I'm. I'm not likely to go charging up to face down these bulls armed only with a small dagger and some harsh language. Uh, probably so. Not. Uh, I think we'll wait. I'll <laughs> wait by the obelisk with the wee dagger held out in front of me. Look at this. Um, 
to see what they're going to do. So effectively, I'm holding to see what they do. Okay, so you're holding as well. I should say as well that I had uh, Jimmy take his action immediately on announcing it. Now, anybody familiar with Crypt World knows that we're supposed to have a section of the round where you announce what you're going to do and then we run through and do it once everybody's announced. However, mm. I'm house ruling that a little bit just out of force of habit because uh, um, I do usually play games where you like you, you act rather than announce then wait and then act so i'm gonna house rule it into into that method yeah um but just for people at home who are familiar and think i'm doing it wrong that's why uh alexis then oh shit <laughs> 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 uh, miss strange what would you like to do <laughs> Uh, I am going to draw my pistol out. Uh, I don't know what the range on it is because I don't have information on that. It's larger um, than this map. Let's put it that way. Right, okay. And these things definitely look like they're coming towards us. Uh, as far as you can tell from 15 foot down, they sound like they're coming towards us. Okay, I am going to basically give a warning shot in their direction. I'm not going to try and actually hit one. Okay. I'm going to try and scare them. Okay, due to the elevation, you wouldn't be able to hit them anyway, so you just fire a warning yeah. shot in the hopes it'll scare them off. You see bits of the, yeah. the cliff, just little bits, just like pebble size, blasted away by the shot from your pistol, for which you are licensed. I didn't know that. It is now the action of the bulls. So the bulls are going to come thundering in. That Guess I didn't scare them then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Um, could everybody give me a perception test, please? Just a general one will be fine. Uh, we've got plus 10. You do we? have plus 10 to your perception at the moment. Yes. And okay. what people are going to notice will differ depending on where you're standing and what you did this round. I, I've passed by quite a lot. Okay. So, Marie, you held your round, or Colette held her action this round. So you're looking around for any further threats, ready to take any action. You mm -hmm. notice three cranes circling above the, the cliff. Mm -hmm. I'm a poem, kind mm -hmm. Yep. That means we need to watch the ground. Um, and, Patrick, you passed. You did oh, see the threats, so you're looking kind of up towards the uh, the brother. You see this bull that's charging along the cliff face. It looks terrified. Oh. I was being chased by something. It also looks hugely aggressive, but it looks like it's maddened with fear. It's frothing at the mouth. Mm. Its eyes are wide and bloodshot. Um, it looks like it's been driven mad with fear. Uh, anybody else that passed will notice one of those two things. If you didn't act this round... You notice the cranes. If you did, then you notice the maddened bulls. So we're back round to the. I notice fuck all. <laughs> so this one here is like pouring at the ground now because it's not convinced it wants to come down this narrow defile down towards you. This one is kind of forcing its way through the edge of the. Uh, well, it's not forcing its way through because it doesn't quite go up that high. But it's kind of working his way round towards the brother, who's now as close to you as he can get and kneeling down. So he's kind of just about protected by the centre of the sphere. And this bull's kind of galloping about a bit. So it's the next round. Jimmy, what would you like to do this round? Now, is there any need to upkeep my sphere of protection? Is that now good for the scene? Uh, let me just have a quick check on that. So were this... Um, age for example which we play a lot of we would know it would last mm. the entire scene pretty sure that's not the case with crypt world so I'll just have a look. Oh dear. Um, so it will last um through protection okay so it's going to last you uh you can keep it going as long as you like, but every round you keep it going, you're going to have to roll the willpower cost again. 
Right. Okay. So I'll do that then. Okay, go for it. So it's the same roll as before. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you pass or fail, it'll you automatically pass now because you're just maintaining it. But it'll do the willpower section for you, which is what you're interested in. Oh, right, right, okay. So it's drained another five points off your willpower. Mm hmm Okay, so what would uh, Aiden like to do now? I'm going to try and calm the bulls. <coughs> okay. Uh, what skill would you like to try and use? Um, I do all Yeah, give it a try. Um, I'll, I'll go to the front of them first. It's going to have to, uh, okay, move you to wherever you're going to go. Right, you are. So you're putting yourself in danger in an attempt to try and calm the bulls. So, they're oh under, no. oh shit. Whoa. Okay, so you've <laughs> failed, and they're under the effects of an evil way discipline. Um, so, oh dear. that hasn't, uh, That this is going to be nasty. They uh, are still a little scared to come down here though, aren't they? So. They are a little, oh, yeah. Um, Brian? Yes? Can I do something? Yes. You're up next. Can I try you. using my um art discipline of the art mm -hmm. telepathic empathy and i'm going to use it on the brother right okay go for it <clears throat> make a roll it'll also tell you how much oh, uh, failed uh, you failed right okay mm -hmm. um, my goal is 61 and i rolled 85 so uh okay but that would have gone up to 71 that's still going to be a fail yeah yeah. Um, okay, so no, you're not able to pick up on his um, emotions. Uh, I mean, he looks quite worried. Um, if that's any help. Disturbances in uh, the fall. Miss Strange. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Marie, you were going to say. It's just we've only just met him. The three contacts we would have had, he's a, he's a, the common denominator, denominator here. Yeah, that's right. So, Miss Strange, what would you like to do? Hmm... I don't think any of my disciplines are going to help at the minute. Mm -hmm. It's astral related stuff. Although I'm tempted to have a look, but probably isn't the best place in time. Really. Um, one thing I'm worried because this is in the um, poem mm -hmm. about one the branch headed stag in the darkness, one the bull with trunks of its legs driving, and one the snake. The deadly tendril root in the grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Now I'm wondering if it's literally a snake or if a snake, as in someone, yeah, who's like a betrayer. Do you know what I mean? That's oh, why yeah. I was thinking that. Yeah. yeah. The brother. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit. I don't know. I am going to keep an eye on the brother, and hold my action. <laughs> okay. In regards to that, I want to see if he's doing anything that looks in the least bit suspicious to me. Okay. Doesn't appear to be at the moment, but give me a perception mm -hmm. test, please, General. Okay. Uh, right, that's still plus 10, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That is. Uh, yes, I just passed. Okay, by... he doesn't appear to be doing anything too suspicious at the moment. He seems to be a bit confused about why he's being told to get as close as possible to Jimmy and kneel down, but he's doing it. He, he, mm -hmm. he does look frightened, but whether or not that's genuine or not, you're not sure. Okay, so the bulls to go. This one charges towards him, and as it oh, reaches no. him, it thunk just into some invisible force. You realise that there's just enough of the sphere making it up here to protect the brother. Right. Both the bull and Brother Pierce look very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> this bull, on the other hand, under the influence of the evil way, is going to come charging down here against its better wishes and attack uh, oh, the, no. the target beneath. So we're going to make an attack roll on, I guess, one attack. Four. <coughs> That's very, very much a miss. So the, as the bull comes thundering down towards you, its hooves slip out from under it. It comes screeching down and it tries to gore you on the way past. But it's kind of, its hooves are flailing as it tries to get its uh, um, them back under itself. 
this one now comes thundering down as well this is not behavior that you would normally expect to see from um from bulls so something's very very wrong here it's also going to be trying to attack you 45 that's a hit um so here we go we've got our first uh combat hit so what's your agility uh 50 50 so you are on defense column four it's only passed by uh so that would be nine um so it's a light wound okay. so tick a light wound box and suffer the loss of 12 stamina as this thing comes down its hooves manage to stay underneath it and it goes you as you twist sideways it just catches you in the arm and opens your arm a bit it's not too bad it didn't get a good sort of whack on you but it hurt and you could have done without it to be entirely honest you would have preferred to have done without it um so. I'm having thoughts here, but you know. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, basically, the murders and now this. Is it something trying to stop us from raising the monster? Hmm. You have no idea. Aye, exactly. Uh, I'm just flapping my gums. Yeah, so Jenny, I think. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. This is just me spitballing, but like you said, everyone who's handled, I don't think it's the box. The, I think the dagger, it, something's able to track the dagger, or else how else would these um, bulls know you were here? How else would the uh, whatever broke into that guy's apartment knew he was in there? Mm. I don't know why it didn't take the dagger, but I definitely think something's connected to the dagger. Maybe it's like bound to it spiritually, and it knows where it is. Just my idea. I think they're the like, sacrifice. I was just going to say, yeah, sacrifices. Okay, so uh, Jimmy, what would you like to do? You are muted. Uh, Patrick, I think you're muted again. Yep, I'm, I'll maintain the field. Okay, take another uh, blow to your willpower points. <clears throat> Only one. Uh, and Aiden, next, what would you like to do? You're now currently being attacked by two maddened bulls who are behaving extremely <coughs> suspiciously. So the one that missed me, I'm going to lasso and then jump on it. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> God. It's got to be worth a shot. Go for it. Let me just get my sheet up again. What was your target? Number? That's a pass to 61. So. 61, so you passed by 19. Um, so the creature's uh, agility is very poor. So 19, that's a heavy hit. So that's a success. So you swing your lasso and throw the looped end. It goes straight over the bull's horns, and as you pull it tightly, it slips down over its neck. You clum clumber? You clamber up onto the, the bull, which now starts bucking and trying to throw you off. However, this means the other bull can't attack you. Um, so that might be a good yeah. move. So, Colette, to go next, what would you like to do? Um. I'm going to run out and join Aiden. Rawhide. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you run out there and do what? I can grab your hand and bring you, you up here. You run out there and do what? <laughs> That's what I'm. I'm thinking. Right. <laughs> Go on, get on the other ball. <laughs> uh, I'm going to see if I can use the dagger to slit the other bull's throat. Okay, not, make not. an attack with a dagger. If you have the attack. dagger skill, use that. If not, it's an unskilled melee attack. I've got unskilled melee. I'm just going to check. Oh, I'm fuck down. a hit. Brilliant. That's what you want. And how yeah, much did you, you pass Yeah, you see what by? I rolled? Yeah. Uh, I rolled, I passed by 41. Ooh, 41. 
Uh, yeah, and Lone Scale Melee is 44%. Shine a light. It is. Defense is very, very poor because it's too big to get out of the way. You've actually mm -hmm. caused a critical wound on that bull. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, okay, you so. get to roll 66 damage, uh, 60 10 damage, please. Ooh. And it takes a wow. critical wound. <coughs> um, so God damn. It has taken a critical wound. And. Uh, 30, 32 damage, right? Okay. Um, so you come running up and slash at the bull's throat. It doesn't go quite as deep as you'd hoped, but you've definitely nicked an artery. There's a lot of blood pumping out at the side of this blood's, uh, bull's neck. It will lose an additional 2d10 health every round as a consequence of how heavily it's bleeding from its, its neck. So... Yeah, uh, well done. Um, so that was Colette's go. Uh, Alexa, what was shit? What would you like to do? <laughs> uh, um, well, I was going to shoot the bull. Um, I guess they're both kind of in the way now, though. A little bit from where you're standing. You'd probably have to move. Or you could shoot the one that's trying to get through the... Can I shoot it from here? Um, yeah, because you're, you're about 10 feet back from the the cliff, so I would say that's probably okay. giving you an angle where you can. And bulls are I, massive anyway. I'm not doing, oh, the, doing the maths, right. if that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give it a go. Uh, let's see. Pistol. Hopefully this actually works. Oh, for the love of fuck. So you've missed. <laughs> I can tell from the uh, the way you said that that you've missed. So you fire a single round. Boom. The shot goes wild. You've n wide. You've no idea where it went, but it didn't hit anything. Yeah, uh, missed by 12. <laughs> missed by 12, yeah. You've not hit anything at all with that. So it's now the bulls to go. So the one that um, Aaron is currently riding <laughs> is going to try and throw him. So this is going to be an opposed agility roll. Whichever one passes by the most wins so okay. um that's assuming anybody passes so the bull <laughs> needs to roll uh under 30 i think yes under 30 it's failed so unless you also fail by more than it did you're still oh put my. on his back it did ah. <laughs> okay oh, so yeah. uh you are slipping um, you're losing control of the bull, so next round, um, you'll, if you fail again, you will come off its back. So currently you're kind of sliding round, you're clinging on, but you're almost sticking sideways off the side of the bull, just desperately trying to hold on to any sticky outy bit, um, like its horns, obviously. Um, so all you're going to be able to do this round is just try and cling on. Um, this bull that you have attacked, it is now, because it's been so badly injured, I think it's probably going to get a willpower test to try and break the power of the uh, uh, thing and run away instead. So let me just see. Well, I will get very far with a wound like that. It won't. No. 43, no, it's still coming at you. So it's going to try and retaliate against Colette. So it's, it's going to try and go you. Um, so it makes an attack. 54 is its chance of hitting. 38, so it's hit. Um, what's your agility? I'm just bringing it up. My agility is 48. So it's scored 16 and you are in the fourth column. So it opens your leg uh, beneath the, the knee. It hurts a lot. Take a medium yeah. wound. And you are going to lose uh, 4, D, 10. There you go. 15 stamina you lose. Right, it would have been a lot worse. That <laughs> bull up there has got no idea why it can't get to this man it's trying to knock over the cliff. It just keeps bouncing off. It's not smart enough to understand why, so it's just going to keep doing it. So, Jimmy to go, what would you like to do? The one thing I can do. You're going to continue holding the, 
Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Uh, so it is Aiden next. Uh, you can't do anything except try and cling on. So give me a agility test, please. Okay. Nineteen, oh. you've passed this time. Passed by uh, thirty-one. The bull has filled again, so you're back on top of the bull. You manage to grab a hold of one of its horns and haul yourself upwards with all your your strength and energy. You're tired. You're slumped over the front of the bull a little bit, but you're hanging on for dear life. You're now safe again until it uh, it gets an attempt to throw you later. So, uh, that's all you can do this round. It is uh, Colette to go next. What would am, I, am I okay to speak? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, I said to Brother Pierce, climb down here now. I, I can't hold him off much longer. Right, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he is going to try and climb down there. Let's see uh, what goes horribly wrong when he does that. Oh, oh he's passed. <laughs> He's passed. He's got a 40% wow. chance to climb down. So he starts scrambling down towards you, looking panicky a little bit. The bull's still bouncing off the, the thing. So Mercedes, <laughs> uh, sorry, not Mercedes, uh, Colette, what would you like to do? Uh, I'll attack the bull again. Who is Mercedes? I don't know what you When I came up with the character concept, uh, I, I was going to be Mercedes McLafferty, but I actually went to school uh, with someone called Mercedes McLafferty, so I thought I might be better not using a real person's <laughs> name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But now it's stuck in the head and I keep using it by mistake. I, so. And I've passed by 15. You've passed by 15, so you are you were stabbing it again, I take it? Yep. Okie dokie. So 15 against the defence column of just two. Oh dear. So that's a heavy wound. So you do, uh, it takes a heavy wound, so the bull's got a critical and a heavy, um, and you've just done another, oh shit, 3d10 damage, and it takes 2d10 from the previous wound that you caused, so it's taken 11 anyway, um, and then you do 14, so that's 25. Uh, so it's in quite a bad way. There's bull blood just gushing out of the side of its neck. Just need to see if a heavy wound causes it to... Oh, shit. Right, okay. So the heavy wound causes it to lose um, health every round as well. So it now loses 4d10 uh, a round, and it has a heavy wound. This is not good for the bull. Um... Okay, so up next we have Miss Strange. Okay, uh, I can't really, I don't want to try shooting at the other bulls because the Alexis and, um, not Alexis, Colette and uh, Aiden are on. Um, a bit too dodgy. I'll try shooting that bull up here again. Okay, go for it. Actually, get a decent shot. Point is it a revolver you use, yeah, or an uh, Just this pistol. So, oh yes, I pass by one. You pass, <laughs> uh, pass by one, right? That's going to be a light wound. So you have done. Um, you gently shoot him. Two <laughs> d ten damage. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, so in its maddened yeah. state, it doesn't really notice that it's been shot, but it has been shot. Um, it is bleeding. It has taken some damage from it, and it is getting a little wound as well. So I'm just going to um, open that. And da -da -da. One light. This one, I'm going to type. I'd forgotten about these little things here. These are quite useful. One critical wound and one light wound. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that is Alexis done. So it is 
the bulls to go again. So the one that's trying to throw um, Aiden off. Aiden, could you give me a agility test, please? It'll do the same. It'll roll. How the fuck did I just... Oh, right, okay. You've got a 55. <laughs> uh, 44. you got a what, what, sorry? you got a 54. I got a 92. I'll keep the 54, actually. Uh, it's worse. So it failed. Uh, so did you. So you're back in a position that, like, if it if you fail a second time, it will throw you. Can I pull the lasso tighter? Um, yes, you can make a lasso attack on your next action instead oh, of a. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it so next time. That's yeah. one of the bulls. So the one that's attacking uh, Colette is now going to attempt an attack. So let me just find out why the hell I've accidentally closed my bulls. Um, Bulls. Da, da, da. Bulls. And it has hit you. So, what's your um, agility? Nine. No, Marie's. Oh, nine. 48. 48. So, it's hit you by uh, 30, 24, 25. Against 48. So it scored another medium wound. So take a second medium wound and you will take 24 damage. I said, Fucking hell. take a medium wound. I think the last one you took was only light, wasn't it? No, um, it's medium. It was medium. So you take two medium wounds. If you get another one, it becomes a um, heavy mm -hmm. wound instead. How many, how many damage did you say I took? 24. I've got stamina left. Okay, so you're gasping and <laughs> bleeding quite heavily. You've been badly yeah. gored by this. Uh, you're feeling woozy and lightheaded from blood loss. Mm. Um, you're in quite a bit of trouble at this point. Uh, however, it is round to Jimmy next. What would Jimmy like to do? Okay, doing my thing. Okay. Burn some more willpower and attempt to keep the defensive uh, shield up. Mm. What uh, happens if you run out of willpower in this game? You collapse unconscious. Oh, yep. Fuck. Uh, oh, Aiden, uh, you to go. Um, I need to help. Yeah. Can I pull her up onto the bull? Mm. Yes. Like I'm going to say can, I just, can. can I just mention, though, like, yeah. I think statistically one of you are going to fall off, and if it's her, she only has two stamina. She'll probably yeah. take two damage coming off. I All right, am I'm going to, okay, I'm going to use, sorry. Mm, well, you wouldn't know. I'm going to try something, but you wouldn't know, so. I'm going to use the bull I have to make it turn and attack the other one. Interesting. So that'll be by use of the uh, lasso. So give me a lasso attack. If it succeeds, I'm going to say that you turn the Pretty ball cool. around and head headbutts the. Right. That's a very good roll. So uh, how much did you pass by? Fifty three. Fifty three. So you jerk oh, the bull's ball. head round suddenly, and it whacks the other ball full in the thing. <laughs> Um, the other bull's going to take 4d10 damage anyway from blood loss this round uh, when it gets to its goal. It cannot survive. But, uh, this, can it? this round, actually I've rolled the wrong amount there. It should be 66 for this impact. Oh, so it's gosh. taken 35 as the two um, bulls crash. And you hear its skull. Yeah. Um, and it is down and dead. Well... It's thrashing about in its death throat. Death throws its dying. Um, Brian, something yeah. has happened to my character sheet. Okay, what's happened to your character sheet? I can't change my willpower anymore. I can click into every other box other than willpower. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just take a look at that. So it's James... What do you need to change it to? Um, my, my last willpower um, charge was five, so it needs to go down to eleven. There you go. Thank you. Don't know. And, what, and whatever it is you've done is, is, is just um, 
corrected the it How has bizarre right yes. okay so that's the first of the bulls is now thrashing about in his death throes the second one the one you hit it with also takes the 35 damage and a critical hit um, jesus yeah so that was a, a bit of a baller move has to be said um so gangster and critical okay so next up we have uh colette to go what's your right to do uh bleed mostly uh, <laughs> uh is it just actually me or has trying... jimmy disappeared off the don't run back well, i'm running back towards the safety of this we're limping back towards the safety of this thing okay you go ahead and I'll just put Jimmy's character back on because he seems... Um, I can see him right I, I, next to him. I've, I've got two now. Yeah. yeah. Same. Uh, see, this is the priest right above the priest. Right. Is, is that his avatar? No. Oh, I've got one. Ah. <laughs> Doesn't... Oh, no, he's no. reappeared. Right. I, I, I just moved him. We had that problem in Phage. We did. One time before. Yeah. All right. We did, and my second screen's just turned off. Okay, so um, you're running back. Okay, I should say that you can move at any point during your action, so if you wanted to attack the bull on the way past, you can. Um, is that to me? Yeah, I can. Yes, that's to you. All right, yeah, go on. I'll at attack the one that um, Eden's okay. been so roll battering. Ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm that not sure looks that looks like that'll probably be a miss. Yeah, mine skilled melee is only 44. Yeah, so you slash at it on the way past, but it's flailing about too much. Um, and to get any closer, you would get yourself gored. So you've decided to probably not risk mm -hmm. that. Uh, so, uh, Miss Strange, what would you like to do? <sighs> Don't really have any first aid skills. Oh. Um... I am going to head up here. Is did you say is Aiden still on the bull? He's on the bull, I. Fuck's sake! It's a big animal. If you're that close, you can shoot it without risking hitting him. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so <laughs> shoot it in the ass. And, uh, yeah, shoot it in the ass. <laughs> Bull's like. God yeah, damn it, that's a pass. Fifteen. How much by? Uh, 15 or 59, so... 44. 40, yeah. 44, that's a critical hit. Um, so that bull has now taken a... Ah, it already had a critical hit. So as you bring your uh, pistol up, it turns to face you, and you fire the shot straight through its left eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that kills the bull. All right. Phew just this one up here now yeah just that one up there left um i've just... got an idea mm -hmm. is it made to go uh you can tell us what the idea is i think right. it is actually the bull to go next but it's not going to get much well to... in that case <laughs> I'll, um i want to wait until it's sort of backed up for a charge yeah at what it's been thumping at Mm -hmm. And as it's about to charge, I want to drop the field. And yeah. Send, send it careening over the cliff. Okay. This is, yeah. this is, this is too good to, uh, to say no. So I was going to say that its uh, minder will now be making it do something different. But, nah, that's it's too good to... Um... Thank you. Yeah, it's good. I like that. Yeah, I like that as well. So as the, the bull backs up and charges, you drop the field and it goes tumbling straight off the... 70 foot cliff mm -hmm. so let me just work that out uh that's a critical and a splat yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm. just tumbling over the cliff and <laughs> bursts as it Ooh. hits the uh hits the ground Ouch. deed but i'll deed <laughs> <laughs> better be told off for attempting the scottish accent any minute now <laughs> 
So it plunges to its death, and with that you see the three circling cranes just scatter in different directions and then just disappear in out of your line. Can I try and shoot one before they disappear? Uh, you can give it a go. It's probably going to be a, a literally a long shot, but we'll mm. see. I mean, it's a pass. It's by 12. 12, okay. Uh, given the range, it's a pass by 2. Uh, okay. So you lightly <laughs> graze the, the crane as it flies off. Oddly enough, even that should have been enough to be a serious wound to an actual crane, but it just seems to shrug it off. Mm. You're well, left my, um... on a cold cliff face confused frightened something very very strange has happened here the the uh, brother pace is still kind of cowering in a corner shaken from the events that have happened you have the sense that some immensely evil force out there has um, made its first strike against you mm. first but you're almost certain won't be the last Unfortunately, it's five past midnight, so that's going to have to be where we leave this for now. Uh, but we will come together to play again um, and finish this adventure off. Does anybody have any ideas? Of, is everybody available on what tomorrow, for example? Oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah. Be... Wait. What, is that instead of your game? What were you going to say there, Chris? Is that instead of your usual game? That obviously it would be instead of my usual game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, okay. yeah, I'd be. Um, so yeah, I knew it. everybody else in the game would be available because you would all normally be playing. Um, thing yeah. With me. So uh, I will have to tell um, Lars. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave Fallen Kingdom for a week, but um, we will pick this up from the monastery next. Uh, tomorrow night. All right. Fact. We'll see how Ben's been doing at the library. And we'll see how bon Ben's been doing. <laughs> I've been library. studying like an absolute fucking maniac. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> so, thank you very much for coming. I hope you have enjoyed your first excursion into the unknown. Nice. Very so, much so. Excellent. Fun. <laughs> we will pick that up tomorrow night when things get worse. <laughs> Dun, dun, so thank dun. you very much at home for uh, watching our first part of our Halloween special, as it turns out. So we'll pick this up tomorrow night. If you would like to join us then, please do so. We hope you've enjoyed it as well. We've been playing Crypt World with a few tweaks taken from original versions of uh, Chill. So it's kind of a uh, combination of the two, really, mm -hmm. if I'm strictly mm -hmm. honest. Um, the music you didn't get to hear, so there's no point in mentioning that. Uh, the <laughs> cast and I would like to thank you very much for joining us. But before you go, Jenny's got one or two things to tell you. Yes, if you're on Twitter, then you should definitely follow us at Gethsemane Games for the latest updates. And you can also find us on Facebook as well if you happen to be on there. And if you want to catch up on other episodes of other games that we do and there's a few there's a few different ones now isn't there mm -hmm. um you we upload every episode to our youtube which is under the same name of gethsemane games and as well as this you should take a look at drive through rpg where we sell system agnostic adventures and maps uh, and also brian's patreon account where you can help support his hard work and receive various goodies including maps for your games um, yep and including several games one of which is entropy effect which is also very kind of um, uh, appropriate for the season entropy effect being a sort of modern sci-fi horror mm -hmm. blend very much worth checking out of course i it would is. say that <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for coming and seeing us play uh, play the game we'll pick it up again tomorrow night but for now from us, do stay safe, take care for now. Good night. I love that. Okay.